Bye. I didn't see one. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Tuesday evening, November 16, 2010. We are the Goffstown Budget Committee. We are one shy of full force. Mr. Bates, if you would begin the roll call, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Bill Bates. Which way are we going? You're towards you. <laughs> Sue Tremblay. <laughs> Jen Geschel. John Dillon. Guy Carroll. Richard Fletcher. John Heichel. William Dan. Hart. Just me? <laughs> no. Okay. Dan Cloutier. <laughs> Dan Kent. Yeah, I get Hart. All right. Christy Garrison. Paul Agros. Kathy Simard. Scott Gross. Ivan Bellaho. <laughs> and bringing up the rear, Bill Gordon. And Mr. Mr. Burt is walking in the door. Is here. Look at that. Introduce yourself, Mr. Burt. Uh, John Burt. Pretty good. We have one chair left. We are a full complement of 16. Wow. That's the first, right? This is our regular Tuesday meeting. <laughs> nice. Um, we'll go home now. Good night. We have the meeting minutes of October 19th to take up. <laughs> so if you would pull those out. I will entertain a motion to bring them to the floor. Anyone? So moved. Who was that? Two. What date was that? 19. Uh, 1019. Is there a second to bring them to the floor? Second. Okay, I saw Bill Gordon. Are there any modifications? You guys have had these for a couple of weeks, so that it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Yeah. Mr. Paul? Not a big deal, but... Uh, yeah, everything's a big deal. My name is missing the S. Yes. No. That's okay. I'm having a heck of a okay. time with that name. <laughs> I have to keep writing it down. How is that spelled? <coughs> it's A-U-G-R-O-S? That's right. Okay. That is a big deal. One's name is a big deal, so I don't have a problem with that. Further clarification? <coughs> Looking good? Everybody okay? What's up? Seeing no changes, those in favor of the minutes as presented with the modification, signify by raising your hand, please. Those opposed, those abstain. And we have two abstentions. That would be 1402. Those in the minority can read into the record. Were you here or not here? I wasn't here. Not here. And you weren't here. That makes it very easy to know why. All right. Let us segue to the minutes of 1029. Entertain a motion to bring him to the floor. So moved. That would be oh, Will Hart. Bill, whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> Do I have a second? That would be Christy. Saw her hand. Modifications. Don't see anything. Don't hear anyone. Let's go ahead and vote on them. Those in favor as presented, Wait, signify by raising your hand, please. Uh, Will, I think you are. <laughs> I don't think Where, I was here. Was I here? Mr. Fletcher, on, mm. I can tell you, on October 28th, I will look at my... <coughs> Suzanne wasn't here. Mr. No. Fletcher was here on 1028. Let me see the hands again, please. All in favor? Doo -doo -doo. Opposed? Abstained? There are two abstained. Did you vote, Dick? Or abstain. You're abstaining. <coughs> so that would be 1303. Who's uh, abstaining? Dick, Suzanne, and Bill Hart. Okay, now as I promised, I put them on the list, but I don't think we'll go over them because we haven't, uh, you only got them like for a day or two. These are the minutes from November 4th, 9th, and 13th. So if you're a pleasure of the committee, we will either take them up in two weeks but we can take them up next month. <coughs> I'd probably like to take them up in two weeks. We'll go off. We'll do them in two weeks anyway, okay? At this point, I'd like to segue into public comment. We have a number of, of the members of the public here. Is there anyone that would like to address the committee? Comments? Come on up. If you would come up. There's a little microphone on the ceiling. Uh, to my right, your left. If you could stand <coughs> right there, then the people up in TV world... An internet world. Is Keep coming. Right Come on up. <laughs> there it is. Okay. It's almost invisible. From Thank back. you. Just introduce yourself. Okay. My name is Lissa Winrow. Um, I'm up on Range Road. And um, I just, I've been hearing a lot about the, the school budget and reading a lot about it in the paper. I've been actually going to, you know, different meetings um, to hear about it. And uh, one of the things that's been disturbing me and my husband 
is to hear that um, you know people are out there thinking that the school board is just out there you know picking random numbers nothing's being cut um, I can assure you as a parent we are feeling the cuts and the kids are feeling the cuts I have here two letters that I got just this week one of them came home today um, one is from the elementary ones from the middle school asking parents for money <coughs> for basic programs that are part of the curriculum okay um, the music department has been cut significantly this is actually a survey asking us they want to be able to possibly charge for us to go to concerts okay this is concerts that are required strings concerts chorus concerts they're required as part of the curriculum um, the students get graded on it they're mandatory um, in this tough economy I know that nobody wants their taxes to increase but I can tell you right now you're just by, by decreasing the budget randomly you're just passing the the costs off to the parents we're already paying for for toiletries supplies um, field trips have been cut out so the, the parent groups and the parents are picking that up I mean for me to be getting letters asking for money for basic curriculum that's required is ridiculous and I mean you're asking a smaller portion of the town to pay for it it's much better off if you could spread that amongst other people um, I've also heard that people randomly throwing out that you know we haven't cut enough staff um, there has been staff that's cut we have some unified arts teachers that are going to multiple schools because of the cuts they're going maybe at their lunchtime they're working at different schools there's I know occupational therapists that are going not only from in our school district but to other districts so the school is really trying to use their resources and spread people around and I'm in the schools and I can see it I can see it from the staff members they're working their best they're trying really hard under the, the slim budget but it's it's starting to really affect the schools and I'm very concerned about that um, so I'm just asking you as you um, review the, your budgets to just put aside your personal agendas really take a look at the numbers don't just throw out random cuts really look at the numbers look at the impact that the reductions are going to have to the students I mean the students don't have a say in what we vote on it's all of the adults in this community and it's really not fair for us to just say we don't want to pay for anything too bad you're stuck with it you know you deal with it make it up later on when you're grown up <coughs> um, so I mean really if you could just kind of look at the numbers and, and just don't randomly think that oh we can cut 10% you've got to figure out where that comes from and how it impacts people thank you how you doing my name's Ed Hager um, I work for the state of New Hampshire I'm part of what's known as the SCA which is an employees union being part of that I deal with the state budget quite a bit I go and testify many different things with bargaining some things we may not think about in this area because we're just thinking town wise as a state budget we're facing between 600 to 800 million dollar shortfall what that means to us talked to a friend of mine who's down at the governor's office quite a bit we have a super majority now pretty much veto proof Republican retirement they're looking to take as much of their responsibility out of putting that in as possible and they're going to shift it down to the municipalities they are looking at welfare the part that they pay shifting that back down to municipalities anything they cut I mean it's e it's easy to say we can cut this stuff but you can't always get rid of the programs what's going to happen <coughs> is they'll cut their costs but they will have to be absorbed somewhere else the municipalities the towns are going to be getting a lot of this come July 1st the new fiscal year the budget you have now a lot of hard work I'm sure is going to drastically change we're going to be asked as towns to pay a lot more what the state used to do they said the big one coming up education they're looking at changing that amendment it was on the news today matter of fact they figure it's going to go right through the only part they wondering about is whether or not they get the two-thirds public vote to take the take the state's liability out of how to fund education all this is coming our way they're going to be huge costs and all I'm saying is when you think about these budgets and I have a son in school also 
I, the last thing I want to hear <laughs> cuts. I mean, I could be facing a layoff, work, being a state worker, even with 17 years in. But the hard reality is, is with that much money short in the state budget, with no stimulus funds coming in this time, a lot of those costs are going to end up coming down to us here. Please talk. <coughs> Thank you. I'm Elizabeth DeBrule. I know I, I've talked to many of you before. Um, I've been really paying attention to what's been going on. You guys have probably seen me at your meetings and everything. I've been really watching all your meetings from 2000 and all the way back from 2010 on Peg on Demand. Um, and uh, so I'm pretty well informed by this point. Or, or let me say I'm getting much better informed than I was two months ago. Um, but I'm still really concerned when I think about the meetings that I've watched on Peg on Demand of this group and I look at what's been going on at, at some of the meetings that we've had, that there are less than truthful depictions of people's personal tax situations being made in this committee. Um, and for example, after the, uh, when Scott gave his presentation at the selectmen's presentation of their budget, and he showed three representative houses, three members of this committee openly questioned those figures and said that that was not what, we, what was happening with their property taxes. So it made me curious. So I went and I pulled the 11 <coughs> members on this committee who currently own property, the 11 elected members who currently own property in this town. I pulled all your records up in the assessor's office, which is all public information. I pulled my own at the same time. I went back and looked at a five-year period, checked everybody's <coughs> assessed value of your houses, how it's changed, um, and then I calculated everybody's tax rate to see what everybody was paying over a five-year period. Okay, now it turns out, I found it on Saturday, that Scott Gross had done the same thing. Um, and I was going to bring a spreadsheet to you tonight, except I'm really bad at Excel and he's really good at it. <laughs> so mine was like 15 pages long and he got his on one sheet. So I said, all right, I'm not going to bother photocopying <coughs> for everybody and he can do that. But there were a couple of interesting things that I just want to take the time to point out. And what I mean about being really honest about your own tax situation. Um, one of the people who said that he, his tax situation did not resemble the three representative houses Scott shown was John Burt. Um, and in a weird kind of way, he's right, because you pay substantially, you pay less taxes than any of the examples that Scott showed. And actually, when you look at what you were paying in 2005 and what you're paying now, you're paying less now. Like in actual dollars, when you write the check, it's less. It's about 2% less. Um, Christy Garrison was another one who said at that meeting that that did not represent her tax situation. And she's right. Um, she mentioned at the June 15th meeting that she pays about $10,000 a year in taxes. You actually pay substantially less than that, more than 10% less than that. Um, and you also didn't mention when you're talking about your personal situation that you own a house with a very high assessed value. Um, you own a house of $383,000 in assessed value, which is way above what the average is. You also have talked about how much your taxes have gone up. You didn't mention that you put in an in-ground pool, which is another thing that's going to raise your taxes. And the third one was Kathy Smart, who has called me and told me how she works three jobs to pay her property taxes, that when taxes come around, she can't buy groceries to pay for her because she has to pay for her property taxes. You also left out the fact that you own a very large home. It's worth $390,000. And so to say that, to paint this sort of Dickensian picture isn't really very accurate. Um, this committee has a lot of tough decisions ahead of it. There are good reasons to lower taxes this year. There are good reasons to keep them level, and there are even some good reasons to raise them. But those decisions have to be made on facts. They cannot be made on exaggerated, misleading statements, unfounded assumptions, and these incredible misconceptions, okay? They have to be made on facts. And there are some of you on this committee, I know, who have worked very hard to get information and make sure it's accurate and make sure it's complete. And I commend you for doing that. But for some of the rest of you, <coughs> you cannot let your bias impair your judgment. And I would really like to see this committee, as it moves forward, make a sincere effort to talk to each other. When somebody says something outrageous, to maybe say, wait a minute, are you sure that that's right? And see if that's really what's going on. Because you owe it to all of us when you're making these decisions to do that.
first time I think I've ever heard an applause at a budget committee meeting. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, have a comment? Ooh. Right at the last second. Come on up. <laughs> I'm Brian Lewis. Um, read a lot about what's going on in the town. Um, just want to say um, there's a lot of comparisons to the schools to business. Okay. I really hope that the schools don't operate like a business because um, my business, we've taken a lot of cuts um, along the way. But on our conference call, we take calculated reduction in service. Okay. We have less drivers for my for my business, so a lot of some customers get left out of the run. Um, is that you know? Yes, yeah, sometimes we lose a little bit of customer along the way. Am I still selling? Yeah, I'm still selling. But um, our kids aren't part of the business. They're not widgets that can be bought or sold. Um, basically, um, if we would cut the budget by 10% per se, we're taking a calculated reduction in service. I mean, that's just it's just what's going to happen, okay? And I'm not going to be up, up here very long, but basically, um, just don't let our kids um, have a reduction in service. I mean, it's just basically, it could be, if one kid gets left out of the loop, I mean, that's our cross to bear. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. We've got uh, another few seconds. Anybody else? All right, then we're going to close the public comment. Thank you. Before we get into our discussion on the school budget, is there anybody on the committee on either the town side or the school side or the village district reports? I've kind of waved them. This is our normal meeting. We usually go around the table, talk about our departments. Is there anything that's really affecting the budget, either current or next year, in your departments that is really... Bill? The only thing I was going to say is I... I promised to come in with the cost on the hydrants. You sent me something. And I sent you something, and if you would forward it to everybody else. I haven't uh, done that yet, have I? I know. Okay. The, uh, I, I can't remember whether it was uh, $407 or $409. That's what you said in your email. Per unit on the what we are charging this year, which is the same as we were charging last year. And our actual cost... Um, about the computation I sent to you based upon our 2009 uh, expenses was $425 per unit, and that is no uh, amortization of the cost, the original cost of the units. In there. Okay. Scott? Um, along those same lines, <laughs> um, I did speak with the Board of Selectmen regarding this particular issue. Um, uh, the Board of Selectmen is not interested in seeing that number lowered. Um, I did. I have to ask them how you want me to vote on these things. Um, that's one. Two, Selectman Camposano advised us uh, last night that Manchester Waterworks, um, they do not charge for um, certain components of the fire hydrant. Uh, I'm not really uh, sure what that was, but he said that if they did, it would be double. Like Penichuk charges a heck of a lot more than Manchester Waterworks and Grassmere uh, and um, the Village. Um, so, you know, again, he spoke to Tom Bowen, who I think is, Man is the who runs Manchester Waterworks, and he, and he said, you're getting a very good deal from Manchester Waterworks and the, and the two precincts that you deal with. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. And secondly, the board does not uh, wish to see that number reduced. <coughs> it, 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 that would be a cost that would then be borne by other to shifting and um, that was that was position on the board, so I will vote not to um, make any cuts in that from the representing the board of selectmen. Further issues in your department that um, you think we ought to know about before we go, Sue? Yeah, uh, the only thing that came up at last night's board meeting, other than the regular manifest items, was we seem to have um, dying kitchen equipment in our two elementary schools. So we're going to be spending about $18,700 to replace freezers, refrigerators, and convection ovens at Bartlett and Maple. But on the plus side, we have a healthy enough fund balance in the food service account to cover those costs. Good. So that's not going to be borne by general nope. funds at all? Nope. That's nice. Okay, one more. Yes, Scott. 
regarding uh, contract negotiations, the town is, is in. Uh, I just wanted. You said this four. Yeah. Did you said anything that this might is, affect that's, the committee? That's, that's, that's um, good. It may be prudent for us to. Um, there is a last day to submit, um, and it may be for the board at some point tonight, the budget committee, to take a look at those dates. Um, that's coming up next. Okay, it's a schedule times because a lot of times these things, believe it or not, they go to like the 11th or 12th hour, <coughs> and you know there's a rush at the end. And if we schedule the dates and we know that we have a meeting, then it's there rather than trying to scramble at the last minute. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to talk to the five members on the school side. Ivan, do you remember the last time you covered a school board? Oh. It was, was it October? The last one in October? No, uh, the last one I went September. To in June. In June. Okay, so you haven't done yours. John, were you there? October 18th was the last time I was there. You were there on 10 18? Yes. Okay, so you were the last one. Yeah. So, let me go here. So then, Ivan, that's where it's in. I'm just trying to schedule it because I've been putting them on the, the agendas, but it doesn't look like, and I didn't really mention it. So let's do it this way. Ivan, you were next at 12 6. I'm messing you guys around because I'm just doing it in the order. Jen, that would mean you're 12 20. And. Bill, you would be, I'm not sure. Suzanne, what's the first meeting? Because it would be the 3rd of January. You guys meeting on January 3rd? You are, okay. I'm not. <coughs> hmm? Not me. Snowbird? Yes. Bill, can you make January 3rd? Yes. Okay. And then John Dillon would be the 17th of January? Is that a holiday for the school? Yes. So. Bing day. Yep, so you wouldn't be meeting that day? You know? So when would your next one be? In February after that? <coughs> most likely? We'll have another budget committee meeting and we'll figure it out. How's that? <coughs> we're, we're actually going to have the board. We're going to figure out in December what date we're going to meet for sure. We're probably going to need a second meeting in, in January, so. I believe we have a schedule for the 24th. Okay. I, uh, yeah. I don't have memory. That would be the week <coughs> after that. So if it was the second one in January, then John Dillon, you would have January 21st, and then John Burt would be February, whatever the first one is in February. I don't have my calendar yet in front of me here. All right, we'll work it through as we get there. <coughs> okay, at this point, we are going to segue out of the regular business that we do, and we're going to go back to the school and see if we can't come up with um, uh, question and answer periods. I know Guy had contacted me and said I got a whole bunch of questions. Um, unfortunately for me, the only thing we could do is we could pull the little table out. Are you comfortable sitting there? I mean, Keith and Stacy and Ray, or did you want to come closer, or do we squeeze over, or it's up to you. I'm sure that that's where the questions are going to go to you guys, and you got books, so. I'm not sure whether maybe we ought to just recess and pull that table out of there and let you sit. Space right here for. Okay. Yep. Can you silence the uh, microphones for about a few minutes?
questions, or do they have to be towards a certain line? They have to be online. They don't have to be online. So, do you have general overall? We'll start with the general <laughs> overall, and then we'll start going through because it's a lot easier to start and just go through it rather than just <coughs> pound and jump all the way around. So, if you have what, one or two just general questions, go for it, Kathy. First of all, I wanted to say thank you very, very much for putting um, the RFPs online. I think that that's great. And my question centers around the RFP. Um, after reading the RFP, one of my questions is, and I know that it states it in the RFP that um, you had you brought together a committee um, to look at the kindergarten building, and it was decided to, that you would rather have an addition on Maple Ave and Bartlett. And I would just like to understand the committee that you had, what was it comprised of, or who was it comprised of? Actually, if you of? go to our website, there's an entire web page on the Elementary Facilities Committee that has the presentation for that. It has all the background information. It has everything that we've done so far. Where exactly? And I'm going to back up right. one spot. I, I'm trying to get this budget related right yes, now. Yes, it is. Because is where, where's the budget number for that? There is no budget number for it. I'm, I'm going to ask them. my next question is after reading the RFP, it looks yeah. like you're going after you get the answer to the RFP, are you going forward this year with those additions? And yes. if so, we would be looking. And if you go to the website, it's right on our home page. Okay. It's Elementary Facilities Committee, and okay. we would be looking at potentially a 12. Okay. Because that the way that Project I read the RFP, it seemed like you were going to get back your information by March something and then go forward with it in October. Or yep, something our like goal that. would be to report out in March what we've used. We used impact fees for those studies and our goal would be in March to report back to the public what we use those fees for. Okay, so we're not looking at making these additions or any changes this year? Nope. Okay, great, thank you. Well, let me segue we're on that. If, if things go like we would want to put a new building or something like that, when would that be a separate warrant <laughs> article you'd be looking, or would you yeah, be? Yeah, it would be it? a bond. It would be a warrant article. Mm -hmm, okay. In t March of 2012, potentially. For right, which means at about this time next year, we might be discussing it, or you might have a warrant article prepared, possibly. Yes. Further general questions? Some of the detail. Scott. Um, Stacy, uh, on Saturday, we, I, I talked about a lot of different data pieces, but we talked about the percentage that, how, how the budget is distributed, and this is the DOE um, report that actually breaks it down, the percent for regular education, special ed, vocational programs, et cetera, and what are we as a district look like? Yep. Do we? Are, I don't have that, on that yet. But we're yeah. going to work, work on that data? Yeah. Okay. I just haven't had time. Okay. Further general questions? Detail guy, you have a number of questions. I do I indeed. Okay. Some of them are a little general, but uh, first if, of all, uh, if, if you can help us when you do that, I will. And I can come up with page numbers if you can come up with account numbers. And if they're in sequence, that's even better. I can. Okay, uh, Ray, by the way, thanks for taking that book and putting it into a spreadsheet. <coughs> it's much easier to work with. I took your spreadsheet and I made it even easier to work with. I'll send it to you if you'd like. Okay. What I did is take the function numbers and their description and threw them into a separate filterable column next to the actual account numbers and names so that now I can sort by location or function number or account or any combination thereof. So I'll send that to you. The first one I, I pulled up was account 111 which is teacher salaries, and it's spread over a number of different functions throughout various locations. Of all the, the, the schools and the teacher salaries associated with those schools, and they break into functions, regular instruction, special ed, summer school guidance, et cetera, et cetera, I noticed that there are five, reg regular instruction, special ed, bilingual, summer school, and guidance that total 600,000 that are associated with the district. Could you explain that to me? Are these do they teach in any of the other schools? <coughs> and if so, why are they? Why is that money tied to the, the district? district? They're all they're all district employees. So, for example, under special <coughs> ed, we have um, two OTs, occupational therapists, who travel between different schools. Um, we have a counselor who travels between schools. Um, the ESOL teacher and paraeducator are under the ESOL lines. 
those are people who travel between schools. So in the district line, any sellers you would see would be people who are not dedicated to a school but go between schools. But they rotate, yeah. right, yep. but they are teachers. Absolutely. Okay, that would fall also with the paraprofessional salaries, uh, account 112? Right, they would just be paraeducators, not teachers. Okay. Uh, account 113, district salaries. What, what, are, what are district salaries? I would need to know. Uh, they they come under numbers. regular instruction, co-curricular. What's uh, the number? Uh, it's 113 is the account. The functions, there's five of them. Okay. Uh, 1100, regular instruction, district salaries. 1410, co-curricular activities. Nice. Yeah, those, are, those would be our tech guys. So our, our technology, the staff, the technology staff and the technology director. Okay, uh, the big one here for 143,000 is 2290 other support services. Again, that's the technical line. So, <clears throat> how many of these are? Well, what's regular instruction? Number one. You're you're in zero zero zero, by the way. Uh, I'm in the the district. Yeah. 2290. Yeah. So zero zero zero. Yeah. Function 1100 regular instruction yeah. account number 113. Yeah, that's our technology staff. Why is that's just so our director. Are they instructing? And, and one technician. And one and yes, one technician. So we have our it's our director who covers the entire district, Gary Jeralaman. Okay, so that's tech, that's one IT. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's under regular instruction. Correct. Is he instructing? It's or the he, line. He's, just he's our technology. Okay. Yeah. So he he's, he's been put under an instruction line. Yep, that's, that's where they go. Okay. Yep. And co curricular for seventy thousand? Under district salaries, that's zero zero. That's our athletic. That's your athletic. Okay. Other support services is more IT for 143. It's the 2290 function. Yes. Those are all of the district technicians that work to support the schools. Technicians. Okay. And then under this, you've got building services, 2620. That's our, it's our facilities, facilities director. director. Oh, that's an individual. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Facilities director. Uh, you're looking at the 113 line. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. <coughs> okay. <coughs> this is spread. This is not just in the 000 district line, but also in uh, at Mountain View and the high school. Okay. There's other support salaries. That's account 116. <coughs> okay. Um. You've got regular instruction, other support salaries in the district. What would that account for? We'll find it. So uh, 1100. Mountain View, 1100. No, no, in the district first. 000? Zero, zero, zero. It's 000, zero, zero, function 1100, oh. account 116. It's on page one. Student support. Again, those are your CODAs in there. Look at this. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Your CODAs. What's the, what's the amount, guys? It's uh, 53000 Yep, yeah, that's, 50. um, that's our uh, uh, certified occupational therapy assistance. Works for the district. Yep. Okay. And occupational therapy assistant? Yep. Is that a teacher? That's a paraeducator. Paraeducator. Kind of, it's it's somebody who do, isn't a te on a teacher's contract, but is <coughs> it's they get paid more than a paraeducator. Um, it's a certified instructor. Okay. And you have a special ed individual there too, twelve hundred. Function twelve hundred. Again, give me lines. Um, a lot of twelve hundred lines. <laughs> one sixteen. Twelve hundred one sixteen. Yeah. In the district. <coughs> so the let me back up the 1100 116 that you were just talking about mm -hmm. the 53,000 that's actually our two in school suspension people that does our in school suspension program our alternative to suspension the, the 1200 116 line that's our coda the 1200 116 the 1200 116 is your the coda that I was just the certified occupational therapy assistant okay. those and, lines and they're they're in the district budget but you also have the same thing for Mountain View and the same thing for the high they school. would be different people, different programs. Mountain View has their own and these other ones in the district travel. And high, the high school has its own. Yes. <coughs> okay. Their population demands <coughs> that they have somebody there. Okay. 
Um, Mountain View and the High School, 204 and 305, function 2410, account title or account 117.2. The assistant principal salaries are very high at Mountain View and Goffstown High School. Is that due to the, uh, what are they called, deans? No, I would say that they're, they're consistent. They're, they're multiple people. They're consistent with all of our schools. The high school and middle school salary isn't any different than the... Yeah, well, the totals are. The elementary, well, they probably take different health insurance benefits. Well, the salaries are all pretty consistent for the assistant principals throughout the district. But the dean of students would be a little bit lower. <coughs> the Maple Ave budgeted an amount of 71.5. Okay. The one from Mountain View is 207. Guy, the, you have assistant principals, you have co curriculum coordinators, and deans of students. There are, there's a higher population of folks at the middle school and the high school. You really can't compare that's them to the right. elementary So the school. elementary line has one person in it. It's okay, a school that's of what 500. I need to know. The so middle school has three people in that line. Are those listed in the salary spreadsheets yep. that yes. you guys gave us? Yep. Which reminds me, before I, I go on, I haven't seen a spreadsheet yet on the, the SAU salary. Where would I find that? We, we got any, three. Yeah, we you got don't, you don't admin? get SAU because it's in the SAU budget. It's not part of this budget. It's not this, this budget. You get the SAU assessment. You didn't get the breakdown of the SAU budget. Okay. You can request a copy of the SAU right. budget. And I have a time. paper copy of the SAU budget which includes all the expenditures that would be borne by the three school boards. Okay. Three towns. But I don't have a breakdown of the salary schedule, I don't believe. Yep, the well, the salaries would be so in there. They're in there. They're, they're in, in, in total. total. Breakdown. Yep. Okay. Then let me go straight to 000, function 2321, SAU services. Yep. That's uh, 1.1 million. Mm -hmm. yep. That we don't have a breakdown of? You have the SAU budget. That's where that is broken down. Can we get an electronic copy of that? Thank you, Keith. Okay. Yeah, if we can get that as soon as possible, that'd be great. Yeah, we have a public hearing coming up on it in December if you're interested as well. Yeah, what's the day on that, Stacy? December 7th. And we're? Uh, New Boston. New Boston. Again. Not my favorite ride. <coughs> Yeah. Scott has a question. Go ahead, Scott. No, I just, um, you know, salaries, public employees, their salaries are all subject. Public. Yeah. Public. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand. So, right. Um, and with regard to, um, I'm, I, th I know we've, we've given them on the town no, side and the, the school either. side. I don't think you're not going to see other health insurance things due to HIPAA. HIPAA. But, um, but even on, uh, like, with the school administrators, if you're looking for comparisons, the DOE website, you go down to the financial reports, it, will, it does break down, not for uh, clerical people, but it does uh, break it down for superintendent, assistant superintendents, business managers, et cetera. <coughs> the other thing that I would like to, and I, I gave this website um, to Ivan, and I will try to forward it on to everybody, and that is, it's a New Hampshire Labor Bureau type thing. And what that does is it breaks down, um, you know, comparable salaries for every single occupation in the state of New Hampshire, whether you're an insurance claims adjuster to a teacher to a superintendent of schools to anything. You name it, it's on there. And that gives you a pretty good baseline to try to compare, whether it be computer IT, et cetera. Um, and that's where I got some of that unemployment information that I shared with you folks. Um, the four, I, oh, by the way, it went down to 4.6 in, in, uh, in October. Oh, I'm sorry, in September um, in Gobstown. So all that, there's a, there's a ton of data out there if you want to compare salaries. Can I go? Yes. Continue. Okay. Um, there are two accounts, uh, 323, which is Other Professional Educational Services. Then there's another account, 339, called Other Professional Services. There's quite a bit of difference in the, um, I, I'm curious as to what those are because they're sizable amounts. Can you read district the numbers? Line, Pardon district, me? District still? Uh, district? Yeah, let's, yeah, district. What are, what are your numbers? Are your numbers? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it, all right, let's try uh, triple zero district. Yeah, well, let's go to your account. The function? No, the account. The account, 339. 339. What's the, is it 1,100, 1,200? Yes, 21, 30, 23, 11, et cetera. No. No, I 1100. 1100 is a regular 1100. ed, special ed. 
1200. Oh, the 339 is going to be the consulting line. It's going to be a 1200 line yeah. consulting. It's for, hold on. It's about 245,000. Yeah, those are our, those are the special ed consultants um, that we, based on IEP needs. Um, the addition, the other, in that same area, you're going to have um, the 561 and 564. Those are your out of district tuitions. Um, those are all special ed requirements. Those are students who we can't provide an education for that we're required to provide an education for. Um, and the consultants are services that we can't provide that we contract out. You contract these, these yep. services They're out. They're all consultant lines. Okay. Before we go one more, I want to make sure the entire committee is with us and we're just not going uh, in your budget books. Okay. Do you want to start looking at some of the account numbers if you have them on paper? If you're in the detailed sheets or the master sheets, the master sheets are a little different <coughs> because you have to look at the top. When he looks at the function code, you can see that on the on the general sheet. But if you go to the detail sheet, you, way on the left, you get the long account numbers, 10-000, like I'm on page 10, for instance. 10-000-1200. Then you go right, be, then there's more numbers, but we can kind of ignore that. Uh, Ray, what's <coughs> the 23 and the 18s and the 16s after that account number mean? Anything important for us? They're, those are program numbers, Dan. They're probably not important to you. We because they will subtotal someplace. Yes. Okay. So we can skip anything after the first tri octet. The first 10 is fun 10. The three zeros are your district. Where are you going? What's the location? Zero, zero, zero being the district. 101 Bartlett, 102 Mountain, no, Maple Ave, 204 Mountain View, 305 GHS, and I think 103 is the kindergarten, correct? So you have those keys and clues. Then the next set of series of numbers, of four numbers, the 1100 is regular instruction, 1200 would be special education, and so on and so forth. Now what Guy did is, what I'm gleaning from here, he looked at the number below those numbers. Okay, where you see 339, 561, <coughs> 564, I'm going on page 10, then page 11, 581, 612, 651. Those are the, the accounts. Or the, I don't want to call them programs, but and they, all of these numbers should be consistent depending where you go. So if we pick uh, 561, it's elementary tuition. No matter where you see 561, it's a good bet it's going to be elementary tuition. Okay. So what Guy did was, I think he, with his spreadsheet, grabbed all of those for doing the same thing and said, okay, where are we spending this one number in here? And in regular instruction. Uh, in special <coughs> education, in, in health services, <coughs> and in what, I'm calling it the PAU, program unit, which is either at the SAU level or at which one of the schools. That's why we're doing it. But I think it's important if we want to look at this, understanding the question is going to help us. And, and I didn't get a, quite of a good fuzzy feeling that we were all on the same page getting the answers to what we're looking for. So it's perhaps we want to slow down and understand where we're going from rather than just getting the question asked by one member and getting an answer and it helps him. I think we all need to be on board on that one. Okay, so I'm going to slow down a little bit, Guy, to see <coughs> what's in Guy's brain by asking these questions and whether it's a concern or not a concern or, or something like that. <coughs> all right, and guys, I will ask if you want to raise your hand and ask some questions about getting more detail on that. That's what we should be doing. All right? We are on 339, other professional services. And generically, that is, Scott? Just, just a question. Um, we've been told at the last presentation that it's difficult to get like a speech pathologist. What, what is, if, if we are not able to get a speech pathologist to work for us, um, what is the hourly rate for a speech pathologist that we're paying on the market right now? Anywhere yeah. between 75 and $100 an hour. Now. Does, do we pay for any travel time or only on it site? It depends on the company you go with. It's if, if it's an individual you're contracting with, it probably not. If it's a company um, that has, you know, they hire speech pathologists and then kind of farm them out, oftentimes you do pay travel time. Okay. So Is it that full rate or half rate? Or it's typically portal to portal, Dan. Yeah. It's usually portal to portal. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I have a follow-up? Yep. If we were, if we have our own, um, is what is that number included when you add in retirement and bennies and all that fun stuff? Yeah. What does that number hourly come out to be? 
I don't have the hourly, but it's it would be it, there are teachers' contract and teachers' benefits, so it's a significant reduction. I mean, if you're if you're if you took if I were to take um, well divide a hundred dollars, take a hundred dollars an hour times a forty-hour work week, or you know, well a thirty <coughs> or thirty-five hour work week for a teacher, um, even if you took it at at thirty hours times a hundred dollars an hour. That's significant, three thousand yeah. dollars a week, week compared to what a teacher, 52 weeks. even a top end teacher, yeah. is maybe making seventy or eighty thousand dollars, including benefits. It's not even close, and um, we pay significantly more if we're paying them a, at a contracted rate. Right now, right now we have only two day, two days a week that we pay a speech pathologist. Now we contract for vision and hearing <coughs> services because we don't have a high demand to actually put somebody on staff. Um, so it's actually a benefit to just consult with those services. Okay, Guy. Uh, okay, I got a quick question on how <coughs> four particular accounts as to what the difference might be between the four. Um, we have 431, which is maintenance. 432 is repairs. Yes. 430 is repair and maintenance. And 439 is other repairs and maintenance. They all have some of them have some significant amount significant amounts of money in them. What, what and I'm wondering what's the difference? Wins. What pages are you looking at again, Guy? Well, um, repair and maintenance is I mean, although it's blank, is a line you have in your budget for Goffdown High School under special ed. The maintenance line is all of them. So can we just pages. do one at a time? I because I, I can't I'm, look at them and know what. Just, they're they're <coughs> what's the difference? Well, Between repair and maintenance would be any kind of repair and maintenance. Um, they would be projects that we know we need <coughs> to do. Um. <coughs> and what goes in the repair line and then okay, what so goes in the maintenance line? Well, let's try this. Okay. 431 is is a maintenance line. Mm -hmm. Typically what you're going to see in there is cost associated with any kind of a maintenance <laughs> agreement we have set up with uh, equipment providers and the like. Okay. Alarm maintenance uh, for fire alarm systems. Uh, elevator testing, uh, you name it, uh, that's going to be in there. Any kind of building <coughs> inspection work that we have to go through. 432 is a repairs line. That's typically where we're going to budget uh, our monies that we anticipate having to spend for facilities repair work. Glass replacement, plumbing fixtures, electrical problems, <coughs> are all addressed out of that particular line. Okay, while you're there, Ray, yeah. Fountain View and the high school building services, 432 repairs, have some sizable amounts. Yeah. What, what's wrong over there? I mean, besides, you know. Well, everything. we, I think, I let's take a look at it because the detailed budget usually has a, <coughs> uh, has a description yeah. of the activities. What school? Tuesday. Well, take Mountain View, 204, 204 192. Page, page 192, people. <laughs> so 431 and 432. So some of the items that are in there, um, other than electrical heating, we have $12,500 to repair the roof. There's 25000 in there for the gym floor restoration and $4,000 for <coughs> mechanical device replacements on our doors. Okay. Um, the same function and account for the high school, 305. The principal's <coughs> requested budget was 330, and got the board and the school board reduced that down to 74.7. Is there a, a major problem over there? Again, if you take a look at the narrative associated with that specific account, it'll give you a description of what's going on. Let's try to get so again, to it. we have um, the AG1. Page 256 and 257. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that line is is money to replace the um, carpet in the media center. Okay. Um, the big, the big one was the Barnard track Barnard upgrade track was for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what it was. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Do you, do you get the? Uh, you have the paper copy. I didn't bring it because I thought I had everything here, but I don't have the narratives. Here. Yeah, that, that's what I found very helpful in the, the long version it, um, with the detail that's sitting in there. Um, I'm wondering if, if your conceptual questions might be more 
applicable. I will have to add the narratives to this sheet. I hope that's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> When he's done, we can sell the program back to the NC. <laughs> it's mostly copy paste. Yeah. Oh, geez. Proprietary now. <laughs> <laughs> Further questions, Guy, or do we have? Um, I had one other one. I just can't quite locate it here. Oh yeah. Um, Three hundred five high school, eleven $1 hundred regular instruction. Uh, books and printed media. Uh, that's what, what's the three-digit code? 641, I'm sorry. 641. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, again, if the narrative is, our, is in the printed version, oh. I apologize. Yep, there's an increase. I'm guessing you're talking about the increase. Right. It's $124,000 for the English language arts <coughs> revision for the high school. 2222641 is on page 243. If you remember, last year was the English language arts recycle revision for that cycle. We purchased <coughs> K to six materials out of ARA funds. Seventh and eighth are in yep. the current budget, which we're looking, we're piloting right now. And we put off the high school to, because of budget cuts, we put off the high school and we budget it for next year. Okay. Then I only have one other question. Under triple zero, the district 1200 special ed. Um, Line five, uh, item 561 and 564, the tuition. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's tuition that we have to pay? <coughs> for our special education for students. The, for the SPED, okay. Those are, those are programs, those are students that we can't manage within our district that we have to tuition out. And I think I spoke on Saturday about developing programs so that we can continue to maintain students right. in. Where, where do they go again? When we um, a variety there? of different places. For example, we have students at the Lighthouse School in Massachusetts. We have students at um, Crotchet Mountain in Greenfield. Um, and we transport them, right? We're I mean, required that's, that's to do that. That's the special ed transportation yep. line I saw yep. earlier. Okay. <coughs> But we still get reimbursed. It's under Caddy. Oh, it's under Caddy. Okay. We would get some reimbursement. 66% of what we're then. supposed to get. Just one. Go ahead. Okay. My last one, again, under the district, 1410 co-curricular activities, and it's 127, the stipends. Yep. At 240000 Could you explain to me exactly what that is? Those are all of our co-curricular activities, all our co-curricular sports as part of the master, our master agreement. So it's our coaches, all of our coaches. Coaches, game officials. Yeah. Okay. Do they do we pay anything? Are they sub? Are they subcontractors, or do we pay <coughs> workman's comp and what? No, we just pay. I think what are we required to pay? Uh, probably like a yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's just basic. It's, it's just a. Is this all athletics? No. 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 It's Everything. also clubs and sports. Everything. If they you look at our area, class advisors you, and yeah. all that. If you look at our best teacher's contract, book, book. it's all spelled out at the end of that. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. What was the last thing you said, Stacy? If you look at our master agreement, the teacher's agreement, they're all yeah. spelled out at yeah. what's in that. Master agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Further questions by the committee? I'm going to throw it out. I'll jump on the sword. Um, got a letter from a resident, and the resident asked, I know this is maybe a more of a policy question, but has the board or district given any consideration to pay to play? Um, the resident did ask about that. Um, <coughs> in light of the fact that some of these things are, you know, there is a cost. <coughs> I, I can share with you that the Parks and Rec Department is looking to charge fees, and that will probably be coming up, you know, shortly. And is there anything at play there to try to more have a user user based system with probably a waiver for those who are less you know less mean? Yeah. I, I do know that two years ago the school board we put together a committee um, of probably fifteen or so people um, that looked at that they studied it for a good couple of months um, met yeah. multiple times and came back with the recommendation to not propose that. Um, I think the committee felt that um, parents would be willing and should be willing to pay for um, extras, but to pay to 
provide the service um, and that was where the committee landed at the end of that um, I was on that one and one of the things that we put together how much we get from in-kind services from yeah. the parent groups it's huge it's a huge amount of money that we would have to spend and our concern was if the parents had to pay a hundred dollars for their kid to play they're not going to be out there spreading salt on the field I wouldn't <laughs> quite honestly you know so and as you know revenues come in they can't be they're not dedicated to go to support athletics it's just another revenue coming in so that was a that was a big part of the decision to not recommend charging fees but that's that's kind of an ongoing thing that yeah. we keep looking at I, so. I don't know that it hasn't it has definitely come up in conversations absolutely um, of whether we need to go there or not are any other districts doing it successfully or have they done it and, and they found it doesn't work or yep there's uh, there are definitely districts who do it absolutely Nashua. 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 I, can send you the inf I mean I have a survey that was done <coughs> I presume there's some sort of yeah, I mean there, there there are other districts who are doing I mean if you read the paper you you see it and, and I, I guess obviously my opinion when the when we're in the situation where we're trying to keep the cost down as best we can uh, people are looking under every rock that's one rock um, the other thing that I know that I brought up and I'll jump on the sword again is that there are districts where they do advertising on their school fields and right. and that brings in yep. that can bring in 10 15 twenty thousand dollars a year in advertising <coughs> we don't do that either and there are people ready willing and able local businesses to put up a sign like that's done at the Villa fields mm -hmm. um, that would help you know defer the cost but we didn't want it to look like well, we do do some of that. Yeah, we what? do we do do some yeah. of that advertising. I know, like the football group, I they there's definitely signs that go up on the field when football goes on, when a game goes on, they come down. But there's definitely signs that are up there advertising. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that we should start, you know, all of a sudden sell our souls and wrap school buses and all, because I know we can't do that anyway. But um, maybe it, it there's could, that, that kind of income could help set help, up some kind of scholarship it for helps. the kids who can't afford right. to. To maybe play or fall into a certain income bracket or something. I, I don't know. I'm just. <coughs> we seem to segue a little bit on revenue. Let me let me tax you with one question on revenue. You you sent us the the preliminary uh, revenue sheet and I didn't notice, but I didn't get a chance to pull out the actual tuition received <coughs> from the last completed fiscal <coughs> year. Do you have that number? Regular education. Um, I'm trying to compare it to the spreadsheet where it says local revenue other than taxes, tuition. And I'm trying, because these are all approved MS-24 numbers. Yep. And then um, I don't know where the actual fits in that comparison. If you can help me with that, that would be. Because uh, approved MS-24 for um, 210, 211, that's the current year. Yeah. Uh, if 0910 five million one fifty was that was the MS twenty four, but that is the MS twenty four the actual or is that like the, the MS twenty four is a forecasted <laughs> number? That's a forecast. It is not an actual. Right, and I think the actual was a little higher than that, or maybe a lot higher than that, and that's why the tax rate that we just did right now was a little more favorable because I think there was right. not quite a million more that came in. Um. You're looking at the MS-24 number for tuition for the 10-11 year, for the 9-10 year? Yeah, the 9-10, 10-11, and 11-12. Because it went from 5.2, 5.2 roughly. It, it goes up and down. Then it went to 7 point. The current estimate is 7,341,550, which looks a little more comparative, maybe a little higher because of the other three, five students. Okay. Last year's, Dan, was $5.8 million okay. for actual revenues. Do you collected. have the actual number there? Five, seven, something, <coughs> five, eight. Um, <coughs> I don't. Uh, if it's close, I'll just put 5.8. Okay. Yeah. Did you send that to us? No? Yeah. Yeah, you get that tonight. I should have. I just sent. Yes, you yeah. sent it. I sent um, what Ray sent me. I didn't get a chance to save it or anything. I just yeah. forwarded it. No. I'll send it to you, uh, <coughs> but I can tell you what the elements are in the revenue projection for the 11-12. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. 
we're looking at regular education tuitions this is going to be from the sending districts Dunbarton and New Boston totaling six point nine million dollars now does that that's regular education doesn't include what we talked about Saturday the Paris. The Paris, about no. the extra Paris no right, but the next number I give you well. will okay. be that number Included in again the seven three number is three hundred and ninety six thousand dollars worth of special education services. This is for a transitional vocational program that's run at the high school, special classes, and it also includes the revenue that we discussed on Saturday, which was the approximate thirty eight thousand dollars that we would be picking up for an additional seven paraprofessionals that were assigned to specific students coming in from the sending districts. That's in the 396? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, also included in that number this year, the 7.3 million, is adult education tuition. Ah, and okay. also includes tuitions from parents. And this would be primarily preschool operations. Okay and any other private pay tuition arrangements that the school district has set up. Do you have those two up. numbers? I'm projecting $20,000 for, for private pay or parent pay tuitions. Yep. And for the adult education program, Parent tuition could come from actually two, most of it pre-K. The other one would be when I hear motions at the school board to saying we have an individual who wants to stay there, but the other town might be paying or something. Yep. Yes. Yep. That would include anything like that. Yep. Yeah. And that isn't necessarily special education. That could be no. regular ed. It could be regular ed. Okay. That average is close to 7,333. The numbers are average, so that, that's, that works. Questions from the board? Members? Whoa, that was close. <laughs> Ivan and Paul. I, I think <laughs> Ivan, I, the old man got you. No, no. <laughs> Older. Old is all right. Old is. Older. All right. Happy the distinguished. All right. We'll go for the uh, silver here over the, well. <laughs> Never mind. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't go there. Yeah, you shouldn't go there. Hello. Go there. <laughs> hey, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the joke later. All right. <laughs> now, I, I was just curious. I, I'm looking at the uh, Gosstown School Dr District. This is a 2011-12 oper uh, operating budget development. It's kind of a, yep. a summary sheet. It's, it, it's kind of easy to look at stuff because it's all summarized and broken out and the percent changes are there. And you, you've got two breakouts. Uh, well, the more interesting one, I guess, is the general fund by school. To get us all on the same page, Ivan, what are you looking at? Uh, this is something. <coughs> Do we have a copy of it? You email It went around. <coughs> oh, I emailed it out. Yeah, you okay. emailed it out. I printed it. Maybe that's. Uh, What's it look like? <laughs> this thing. I don't yeah. know. What, what are the title of it? It says um, Operating Budget. Of, it's dated 1028. 1028. 2011-12 operating budget development. Gosstown okay. School Looks District. Like this. Mm. Okay. You, uh, there was several of these that went out. I don't know the date they went out, but the printer could handle these. Couldn't. Do you have them? Does everyone? Yep. I got a go. You know where I am. You can share them. Or? No. Okay. And in the general fund by district. You've got the total fiscal year 2011-2012 actual and then proposed a dollar change and then a percent change. And it's summarized in, at the bottom. And, and I'm rounding off very generously, I guess. Uh, the budget's gone up 35.6 to 37.5. And I apologize if rounding off quick uh, didn't quite do it. But there's a $1.8 million increase, about 5.21%. That's the increase, the proposed increase for the entire budget. Mm -hmm. Correct, including yeah. Yeah. the food service and the grants. The total operating yeah. budget. Yeah, understood. Yeah. And also should note that some of that is offset by increases in revenue. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm just looking at the data that's here. Yeah. And for instance, on the top right, you've got salary and benefits for the uh, six different categories, the first being the district. And I just noticed uh, one, uh, 1, 997 <laughs> for this year going up to 2,354. It's a 17.9 percent increase in salaries and benefits for the district. Correct, and that was that's due to some additional staff that we talked about, new programs that we developed on Saturday. Um, we talked about two new programs that we developed that have been funded by ARA that we now right. are picking up, but it's an overall cost savings to the district because we're not placing those students right. out of district. All, that's the increase. All I'm saying is that for each of the schools, and I'm just going down, District Bartlett, Maple Lab, Glen Lake, Mountain View, and uh, the high school is uh, 18%, 11, 7 7.1, 3.25, 7.5, 6.4% increase for a total of 7.9%. So salaries and benefits have gone up a total of 7.93. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and the total budget has gone up 4.5. Right. I understand. So I presume to do that it, and the uh, non-salary, now the salary part of 26 million out of 37 million, I guess is three quarters, about three quarters of percent. Yeah. Your three quarters of the budget is in salary and more compensation. More than that, salary yeah. and benefits more yeah. than that. About 75%. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Okay, 65. Yeah. No. No. 70 no. plus. But that's what we do. We are we are educators. They're oh, I, teachers, I understand yeah. that. I understand. I, I also want to stress that when you, when you say salary and benefit increases, most of the increases have to do with the fact that the state has changed the retirement contribution and the cost of our health insurance increases. It's well, not that just was all salary increases. That, that's why I was asked. I mean, I'm only going by the titles that are here. That's what I wanted to hear. I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You've got benefit increases. Yeah. Especially, well, like you said, the retirement program, they've changed the ratios up the state as to what we have to pay and everything. So that's, they increased it. do you have a percentage increase in, on your head? Is it it's 5, 10, the, 15? It's budgeted this year at 9.77 for teachers, 9.77 percent. Right. It's, it's in the overhead uh, we did on <coughs> Saturday. So you should have a copy of it um, in the handout that does show the uh, last two years, uh, this year and last year. Okay. okay. Was, was last year on that? I don't remember yeah, seeing I it on there. The I, I know the I know the new year was yeah. on there, but I don't remember last year. Well, let's take a moment and take a peek. Uh, retirement went from 8.02 to 977 for teachers and for others. So our support staff went from 9.16 to 11.09. So these salaries and benefits are a combination of personnel increases, salary increases, and benefit increases. Correct. Okay. It's everything. Yeah. It's everything. And obviously, if, the, if well, if 65% if, uh, went up 7.9 and the total only went up 5.2, you had to take away quite a bit from the operating Absolutely part. Absolutely, we did. To, yeah. to make it. If I could just ask, what's the 65%? What's, the, what's that number you're saying represents? 26 million is roughly 65% of 37.5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I understand what number you're the 37.5 including not just general funds but the other two funds right. by, oh. by the They're grants and food service right. the total bottom line yeah. Yeah. Million okay. and it should be 26 <coughs> against yeah. the 37 Depends you really need to take a look at the salary benefit yes. costs associated with the other two fund programs to make that a legitimate comparison Ivan yeah so I think you should be the looking at a 27 six number <coughs> and expressing that as a percentage of the 37 five okay okay I'm, I'm, we'll put you closer to 75 yeah. I'm, I'm only saying it's just sheer coincidence but just comparing numbers if the uh, salary benefit line which has gone up salaries and benefits, the increase in people, the increase in salary, the increase in benefits of uh, 1.95 rounded off. That's about, it's very close to the total operating budget increase, yes. 1.85, just by coincidence. Yes. Yeah, there was a lot of reductions in the budget to meet those. To, to offset things. that. Got it. Okay, I just wanted yeah. to, to understand that. Mm -hmm. I got Paul first. Paul, then over to Scott. Yes, thank you. 
Uh, I apologize if I just have a couple of things. I apologize if any of this has already been addressed either earlier tonight or at the meeting on Saturday. But uh, the first was voice communications account 531 under <coughs> high school. Uh, we have. I looked at the narrative and it had reference to a line. Page one, Paul. Um, let's see. In the, in well, the white copy. I too am looking at the spreadsheet only, but ah, I did I we'll did look it up it. and then I, I lost the page. So. We'll find it. Uh, Dan will find it. Just 531, or are you going to do 532 school? and 33? The high school. Uh, uh, I'm guessing that's on uh, uh, Just 531. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing you're asking the question around page 250 now, or so? you're looking at the district <coughs> or at one of the schools? You said the high school. High school. High school. Gosnell High School. That would be 2410. 305, 2410, 531. Yeah, page 250. Yep. Yeah. So are you asking there. about the increase in that line? G4 line. Yeah, I yeah. see the G4 line. Yeah, right now the high, the high school is our new hub. So it all it, everything comes in and out of the high school. Um, you'll see smaller increases in the other buildings, but the, the high school decreases. Uh, decreases in the other buildings. The high school has <coughs> it's where all the lines go in and out of now. Okay, and is that line a point to point between the high school and the other schools, or is it a external internet connection? bonded something like that. Uh, I can't I give you a technical description of it other than to indicate that it is the hub for all of the data and the voice services for the school district. Okay, so these are all the Cisco everything. items, right? Yeah. Are we yeah. using the Kathy? You had some experience as with the Cisco sales and things. Is this using the internet as a general wiring hub, or are we going to need the local to area or network something? that was set up? In yeah. So do you have a, a using VPN? Is that, but you're using it through the general cable way. You, you didn't lease any lines to go from I, here to there. No, we don't know. Okay. There's, there's I, a. I don't believe we did. I, if okay. You can, I think we probably should have Gary. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write a question yeah. down, yeah. but I'm going to ask Paul mm -hmm. first, if, if you're going further with this or you want to try to understand better conceptually, is the question going to go? because we went to an IP-based phone, where are the comparative reductions in the other lines that would account for this? That question is going to be asked anyway. Yeah, but you I can go there. You can see the other reductions. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was curious whether it was an internal line or set of lines or whether it was one facing the outside world where the high school is, is serving as a proxy to the Internet. Um, and depending on which it is, I was just interested in what kind of research was done prior to um, signing a contract with G4 and as opposed to you know, any other. Uh, again, and Paul, and I don't think you were at this session, but there was a rather detailed presentation that was made back in June. Right. I think there was a meeting that was held at the police station yeah. where uh, the technical, yeah, uh, yeah where the, uh, our technology director I think it was May. Uh, actually May. went through the entire process. So. May. We can yeah, see right. if we can yeah. resurrect that for you. Okay. Well, we I can know. probably look that up. Yeah, okay. the minutes are probably on. Okay. Okay. Um, the other, the only, yeah, the only other oh, thing. before we segue, oh, yes. The the second part of his un, 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 unquestioned question: Where are <coughs> or do we see savings someplace? Take a look at each of the individual school sites. Same account line, and you're going to see decreases. Yep. Okay. Now, should I? Look at both voice and data, 531 yes. and 532 yes. combined? Okay. I'm actually doing that now. Uh, let's see. The bigger one would be, let's see, Mountain View 531 goes from 11232 to 7608. That's just budget to budget. Maybe that's not a viable comparison because the budget may or may not be the actual. So. The reason I mention that is because the actual expenditures of 0910 was 8500, and it might the budget might be a little more than what you need. So it would not it would be a better comparison looking at the actual versus what you think is going to be based because zero based out. budgeting infers okay. that the 1112 number and the is 11, closer 12 to what the 1112 number is a quotation from the service provider okay. for each of the schools. 09 <coughs> to 10 was not a hundred percent new technology. It was a, a segue during the year, correct? In 0910, it was just the Bartlett School and Glen, in, uh, in Glen Lake. They were the only facilities with utilizing the new system. 
Okay. This is the first year the other schools have had it. I don't see any large reductions. Um, but we do see, um, if I added up all of the 531s and 32s, the current budget is about 90890 If I add up, and this is the new one, it's 107717 107, let's see, 108, 91, about 17,000 more. And is so the, the new, would it be fair to say that the new phone system then would be <coughs> budgeted higher than the old one? Unless there are some, some costs someplace else that I haven't. I need to take a look at what it, what it is that year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can come up with an answer to that. I will try to put that in a, or do you want me to write something down or you just want to? Yeah, I'd like to know what you're looking at okay. in the way of a comparison, then we can. Uh, Try to answer you specifically. Okay. Paul, go. Okay. This might take a while to get everybody on the same page for this, but in a similar vein, um, the maintenance account throughout. Um, let's start just generally. The I know that there was the Honeywell contract that was mentioned, um, and it was mentioned that that would be somewhat of a cost-saving measure. Uh, I was wondering where we're seeing reductions into which lines um, if that's happening now or only in the future or well it's actually a cost avoidance setup you know we do get annual reports that we do audit <coughs> and through the first four years of operation right now there's a total cumulative cost avoidance of two hundred three thousand dollars and that 203000 is net after the school district has, you know, paid uh, for whatever oil and electricity it's purchased and has also paid on a note for the new equipment that was actually introduced into the uh, system to run these, these systems, okay? Okay. Um, it's cost avoidance. You're not going to see a dollar-for-dollar dollar savings. Mm -hmm. What you're going to see is we spent $203,000 less for energy for the past four years than we would have if we had not implemented these energy saving um, uh, uh, enhancements. And that calculation is based on just a projection it's based of upon, prior? It's based upon actual costs that we spent, or actual numbers that we spent for electricity, heating oil, and propane and it's measured against the benchmark that was set up originally when we went entered into the contract agreement with Honeywell. <coughs> this is something that's been in existence now <coughs> since 2003-2004. Okay. So if we said our oil, our oil burners were running at 80.9 percent efficiency four years ago, then if that was the case, how many how many BTUs they were putting out the time, and if we kept the same, not go down, but if we kept the same, how much fuel would we have had to purchase? To heat the building at the same rate, and what the new one is the better energy efficiency, and I don't say that just for us, but there are people listening that. Plus, it helps me remember at this age <coughs> the synapses click better. Ray, that, that's net savings after the the cost of the Honeywell contract. Yep. Yes. 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 The principal payments. Got another one. And that was you know the other piece too to put again <coughs> add a little more context to it. Um, the Honeywell did work with the school district, and we did get state building aid for this equipment upgrade. So everything that we went out and needed to purchase for implementation, <coughs> we really got 30 cents on the dollar from the state of New Hampshire to help us with that. Okay. So again, it's it's been a, a very beneficial program right. for the school district since its implementation. So the further question would be, is, does the 203000 <coughs> not include, because we wouldn't have spent that 30% anyway, so that two hundred and three could have been less if we had to have bought all the equipment ourselves? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So we were able to make it even higher because yeah. we were lev leveraging. Yeah. Ivan. Yeah. Two more questions. I apologize. <coughs> the, uh, 
I had other questions and uh, I should have jotted them And then we'll down. come back to Scott. The, the, the same page, the same uh, mm -hmm. summary sheet. And I was looking at the uh, dollar and percent change of the Fund 10 district, Goffstown High School and all that. And I noticed the salary and benefits line for the Goffstown High School, the budget is 10 million one. <coughs> And the increase requested is 613,000 or about 6% compared to the district where the, sal uh, the salary and benefits are 2 million three. It's the budget. A 300 and, well, three, 358,000 rounded off for a 17.9% <coughs> increase. Mm -hmm. So there's something different percentage-wise between salaries, benefits, or additional people between the Percent high school and the... Uh, right, your, your beginning number is different. Pardon? Your beginning number is yeah. different. You're starting from 1,009,000 under two the three. district to 9,005,000 under the But the percentage is much higher on a smaller... <laughs> <coughs> it would be. It would be. And the... All right. So there's nothing... All right. And the other question, the... Uh, the district proposed budget total is seven million three, and the salaries are about two million, seven million three and two million three. The, so the salaries here are about a maybe a third. Mm -hmm. So two thirds of the district budget isn't salaries and benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hang on for a second. If if I can be on board, I'm not sure where you're coming up with your seven million. That's why I'm. The, the district column, proposed budget. The actual budget. The one that says district in yeah, column A? Zero. No, it doesn't say zero. It says zero. district, Dan. It says district. I, I only have 2.354 million at the general fund. Um, for salaries. For salaries. Right. Yeah. So you're saying, okay, now I understand. So you're, you're looking at salaries and benefits, comparing it to the, the proposed the district total budget. The proposed. Okay, yeah. gotcha. To the district. So it's about 33%. only a third. Yeah as compared to 65% roughly across okay. mm -hmm. the right. board. Is your question what else is in that line? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's got to be a lot of non There's summer school, there, that's where all the school board, that's where all the special ed tuition, out of district tuition, that's about a little more than two and a half million dollars. Um, you're not our calling audit, that. legal, the SAU services. We, don't pay the, we pay the tuition, we don't, we don't pay the it's individuals. Not staff. So you're not calling that salary and benefit? No, no, no. 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 it's tuition. It's tuition. Okay. But that's also the school board, the treasurer, election services, audit, legal, SAU services. Um, let's see what else. The property insurance, regular ed transportation, special ed transportation, and our bond and principal interest are also in that line. Okay. If I look at the three-digit numbers, which three-digit numbers did you use to include in with the salaries and benefits? 111 through... Something. All of the 100 accounts, Dan, and all of the 200 accounts. Okay. Which makes sense all the way down through workers' comp. What I did was I just <coughs> tried to like, oh, take a look at the biggie. Um, the big one, Ivan, of course, would be the million dollars for the tuition, other private. There's a big one right yeah. there, that one line item. So you really need to go into the de detail sheet to break yeah. this out further. Yeah. Yeah. The twelve, the twelve hundred account itself is um, one point five million dollars of non salaries and benefits. Well, there's five million of yeah. So there's one non salary, non benefit. Yeah. Right. And like regular ed transportation is a million. Special ed transportation is I think seven hundred thousand. Coming down, there's another one point one. Oh, don't forget, there's one point one million for the SAU. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks for the clarification explanation. Yeah, and another million plus for, oh, st student transportation is like 1.7, did you say? Yeah, it is. Yep. I'm looking at uh, the two, uh, regular yeah, and, and uh, sped. Yeah. Yeah. Just those four right there are pretty big. The bond is actually down somewhat because... Um, the refinance. Yeah, you're, we're, we're looking at... 
Am I looking at it correctly? We no, the you're mountain. looking at the Mountain View <coughs> and uh, Maple Bond, which will be retired ending. in August 2011. Okay. Yeah. That would make for... <laughs> we wish. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's a <laughs> refinancing. That's pretty good. All right. Scott, you're up. Oh, you're good. Just keep Ivan, telling yourself. Ivan. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> Did it to That's you. That's true. Good. It's not good. Feeling good is good. I have to behave. My daughter's in the room, so. Uh, Excellent. Can you bring? Can you bring here every meeting? <laughs> Did you want to introduce her? <laughs> you know, for the record, Dan. Yes. Go ahead. Made, it's for the I record. Made four it's been comments at the last meeting. I challenged myself to listen yeah. more than talk, and I did succeed. So. I only was I only spoke when spoken to by a guy. I don't know if you picked up on that. But. I noticed that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we did. I just. I, okay. I did. The second time we get a round of applause at the budget meeting. It was like a weight loss type program. I succeeded and. Um, okay. All right. Any further questions on on the budget? Go ahead. I had a question. Someone uh, asked me. Uh, two people asked me. Um, Go ahead. With the budget, uh, you had the helpful fact on your website, FAQ. Yep. Um, and two people asked me, would the budget be posted on there, the electronic version? We're actually working on that, and we're hoping by tomorrow. We had to try to find a way to post a 200-and-something page document, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, we've been working with Pentamation to be able to get it into a format that's posted. So we think we have it figured out, so we're hoping tomorrow to have that up. That's great. We have a yeah. 3,000 line <laughs> spreadsheet. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. So it was just a matter of how to <coughs> figure it out. Because when we printed out the budget you have, yeah. it's about, it's each each section is a different printout. Yeah. And so there was no way to easily, so we've been working with Pentamation to figure that out. I think it's great. I think folks will be able to, if they want to, they're watching this meeting, they want to follow line by line, they can, they can do it. I think it's helpful. On the same night, NCIS is on. Exactly. <laughs> this is much more interesting. Bad yes. ratings tonight. Is that <laughs> That's we're, no, we're going to get the good ratings. Uh, Further question, I John? Uh, can you? Can you? Is there any way you can quantify the benefits that the school board gets uh, in the budget? Uh, I, we we talked about laptop program, and I think they all get a laptop, but. Someone was saying to me they're part of the, the health ins they can buy into the health insurance program as well. Yep, the that? school board gets they borrow a laptop. They're yeah. not theirs. They borrow, they borrow them. Yeah. Um, they ca they are eligible to health and dental, but they pay 100% of that cost. Okay. Yep. There is no cost to taxpayers. They pay 100% uh, of that. Great. Good to know. That's a good question. Are no. budget committee members allowed to buy into? No. 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 no they can't. But elected officials. No. I, I don't know. We are. They are elected. We are elected. <laughs> Think, um, if it has to do with can. if it has to do with being paid, then it's possible that um, our salaries don't count. We don't make anything. We get I mean. zero. But maybe yeah, we do make zero. That's <laughs> correct. No, but, but maybe saying, we but need to right, get ourselves a dollar. Yeah, and I think that's right. Selectmen or school board members can actually they, they they can qualify to pay the whole freight, but budget committee members cannot. Is that what? I have no idea. I it's never yeah. come up. I I asked Sue a while ago. Yeah. Probably yes. When I lost my job, I asked Sue. Yeah. And um, she said that it was up to the, you board had to bring selectmen. it to the selectmen and it right. had to be voted on by the board of selectmen. The last, not your bunch right now, but the yeah. group before, I guess it had come up and they had said yep. no reason for it. But it would be great if it could be looked at again. Okay, I didn't, okay. I'll write that down. Well, I mean, it begs the question, why could the school board do it right. if the mm. budget committee couldn't? Because they it get would. paid if we don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's measure. Years ago. You get right. elected. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's anything to do with it. I think it's elected officials. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, there are... I get a... Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are 14, yeah. there are 14 yeah. of us yeah. who are yeah. elected yeah. by the yeah. general yeah. populace. Yeah. Twelve? Actually, 14, because the two appointed members, Sue and Scott, are elected by the town. They're appointed <coughs> to the committee, but they're elected by the town. Um, Dick and Bill aren't elected by the the general town, but they're elected, I think, by their school, or you're appointed by your school district. No, school district. How about that village precinct? districts. Yeah, village districts. Yeah. <coughs> so that's there. Thank you. And Guy? You get free water. <laughs> All you have to do is suck it out of a hydrant. <laughs> you know, when it rains. <laughs> That's 750 <laughs> gallons a minute. That's about 146 more than I get. You can handle that. Guy. Yes, sir. Question. Yeah. Um, for Stacy and Keith, 
Um, $37,481,820. That's a total if that budget. proposed budget was adjusted by, say, a buck, you could survive it. Ten bucks, maybe a hundred bucks. I was looking at my notes while we were talking here a minute ago from a couple of school board meetings that I watched and a couple of meetings here. And that the school budget can't support any more major cuts. I understand that. Are there any are there any minor cuts that you guys might be able to go back, sit down together, and then come back here and say, okay, we can't we can't handle a ten percent cut. The any more cuts we can't handle major ones. But can you guys come up with any suggested adjustments? Because the option is we might. And it might not be in the areas that you guys might feel, you know what? Without compromising education, without compromising the kids, without compromising services to those to those kids, maybe we could do without this this time or not. Because I know you can survive a buck or a thousand bucks off this thirty seven million dollar budget. Maybe if you guys I'd like to see you go back, just sharpen the pencils and come back to us and say, you know what? Maybe we can do without this this year. It might be minor, but I'd sure like to see you guys try and I think it would it would certainly be a service to the taxpayers and it would do us? Uh, you know, I, I I can certainly understand the request. <coughs> um, I can say that the board did review this budget, and we felt it was a bare bones budget. But I'd be glad to bring that suggestion back to the board at the next board meeting. I'd be glad to bring that forward to them for discussion. And that's that next meeting is when? First, uh, it will be November. December. I'm to December. 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 December uh, Six. Third? Six. 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 So at this particular time, there is nowhere that you see that anything I would be adjusted. I can't talk on behalf of the board on where we feel things go. I'd have to have the board put some input. Mm -hmm. um, Can we ask a question? Chair, I can't answer that. Um, Can you ask me a question? Yeah. Sure. Uh, how far do you want us to go and say compromising our facilities? I don't Not think I doing said facilities. maintenance I think and I was, stuff like I didn't, that. I don't think I said I know facilities. you mentioned it, but... <clears throat> Historically, that's usually. No, no, I didn't. I don't think I mentioned facilities. Yes. I said the, the services and, and the quality of the education. The kids are number one, obviously. Right. Okay. So. So it's okay if we compromise on facilities. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you if you stuff. have an air conditioner and a window that's <coughs> rattling, but it's still cooling the room, can you do with that air conditioner one more year? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. You people would. That's okay. the kind of thing I would think you'd look at. Right. But if you think the noise is too much. And you need to have that air conditioner, or else, then you know, don't reduce the budget. That's all I'm looking at. That's all I was asking for. Maybe based on your own comments, <coughs> that you can't sustain sustain major cuts. That implied to me, well, maybe there's some minor ones we might be able to come up with. But yeah. in, your in call. I mean, our charge to look at the budget anyway. Budget. Pardon me. Sorry. We put forth a very lean budget, but we're glad we would first meeting in December. <coughs> oh, I'm sure. Take the time and come to advise me. I'll bring it to the board. Before I recognize Mr. Bates, um, you guys received a default budget calculation, which is the look today of what it looks like. The difference between the default budget and the proposed budget is $1,094,573. What that means is if everything went to the warrant as exists today, and there was a choice between what the school board put forth and what the default budget was, then the school board budget if the default budget were to win, let me rephrase that. If the warrant article for the budget would not to pass, right. then they would go to a default budget. And the default budget is just shy of $1.1 million less. So the question would then follow up, where would you guys, <laughs> keeping that in mind is from what I'm thinking, um, if we wanted to think what Guy was going, what would happen if a default budget would be placed in if the warrant article would look like it would today? I mean, that would be something else to, to ponder. Mr. Bates. Yes, I had some uh, questions on revenue, on the revenue side, uh, and then some general comments. <coughs> uh, as far as uh, after school extracurricular programs, <coughs> uh, giving immediate serious consideration to starting to uh, charge for that. I highly recommend we do that uh, before next year. 
Um, as far as at, at tuition goes, you may have mentioned this, Stacy, uh, on Saturday, and I didn't pick up on it. When was the last time that we raised our tuition to uh, the uh, schools to send pe people here? For the is New, for New Boston and Dunbar, yes. every year we recalculate that. It's based okay. on our actual cost and expenditures. So okay. every year that's recalculated. Okay, and is, um, do you look at other surrounding communities that may do tuitioning and how this squares with that? No, we, our, our, our tuition rate for Dunbar and New Boston is based on our area agreement. It's spelled out right in the area agreement how we calculate that out. Okay, and when's the next uh, area agreement? It expires, our current area agreement expires in 2014. Okay. If, um, if I can just interject one thing, the area agreement was renegotiated three years ago? 2004. 2004. That's a little more than three years ago. Six year years agreement. ago. So, in, and that is conceptual. It's not solid dollars. <clears throat> it's all concepts, pretty much, there's about yep, this, that, the other, the formulas. Okay. And so, in 2014, it would come back up again. Okay. The reason I asked that, Bill, is that there's a little leeway for us in there where they had seven pairs, I guess, new that are added to the budget <coughs> that the other school districts would be paying for them 100%. That's part of that area agreement. If the child from the sending communities were to no longer come to the Goff Sound School, that pair would then need be done. Be have to be laid off. Correct. Or, okay. Continue, please, Bill. Okay, and then uh, pertaining to the new new programs you, you spoke about that uh, are in district programs that have uh, actually helped us save uh, the outflow of dollars, uh, said they put in elsewhere. Uh, are these, and I know there's no way to categorize these, are, are these some kind of sp uh, special need programs? Correct, correct. One is for our autistic and lower functioning population at the elementary level, and one is for our behavioral students at the elementary level. Okay, so uh, j just as uh, I know that you're tuitioning out uh, people to other programs uh, outside the district, um, how much thought have you given to starting to communicate to other districts that you now have this program in We town. absolutely would be doing that. What we want to do is make sure that the program has a good foundation. <coughs> we just started them this year, so we want to make sure they're good foundational programs before. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it is these are, these are very difficult kids to deal with, and sometimes we don't want to buy somebody else's problems. So yes, it is could be you know it could be a revenue stream, but we also have to manage what kids we we want to make sure if we're bringing other kids in from out of district, we're not affecting our own kids and their programming um, by bringing in more revenue to and taking in kids that we maybe can't handle. So there's a, a balance between that. Certainly cost benefit there for sure. And, and Stacy, we <coughs> actually do that with uh, Glenn Lake. We actually Correct. took in a tuition student from a yep. uh, district um, and charged. Uh, tuition for him and for her, and that was a special needs student. Correct. We put him in our program at Glen Lake. Okay. And then my uh, other question, let's see here, had to do with, uh, let's skip on my, uh, oh, um, so uh, again, looking at budgets for the future, when we're thinking about uh, what may be coming in terms of additions to both the elementary schools. Um, are we also doing that analysis of what it would what it would cost to tuition out uh, our students to other districts versus the cost of new additions? Are we doing that cost, that analysis of we, we have an overcrowded school in Bartlett, we, we see where the population's going, we have a we have, a, you know, the architect's telling us the dollar's going to be X, <coughs> but based on what what the possibility is for tuitioning to surrounding districts, we believe a per head cost of Y uh, uh, yields us a lower out of dollar cost and may not uh, uh, completely take that off the table, but maybe uh, push out the the eventual date when we have to do that. We have not explored that. I don't know that the board has entertained tuitioning our own students out. I think it would be likely much more expensive 
you have you'd, you'd be paying their tuition rate. Um, first, you'd have to find a district who was willing to take in yeah, our a couple students. Hundred kids. Um, and as you know, well, not, there's not, not very the many kids. schools who have large openings. Um, the other piece is you'd probably incur much more expenses because you'd have to then <coughs> transport all of those kids to wherever that was going to. So you'd have significant busing. Um, as, as I'm costs. saying, not necessarily uh, putting off an addition altogether. I'm saying pushing out the time period for that addition. And, and I, I, I think a, 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 a more reasonable look would be to likely add more portables to relieve crowding spaces. Then <coughs> I, I think that would be a cheaper option than likely tuitioning students to other districts. Stacey, if, if, I, yeah. if I could just jump in on this one. It's an intriguing issue. It's, it's intriguing, I think, because I'm thinking only internally. I'm thinking Dunbarton, New Boston Elementary, which if you look at their per pupil uh, in a class, is, is, is a lot less than ours. I can and tell maybe, you. And maybe would there be any interest for Dunbarton and New Boston for us to would lessen their costs potentially, and so they may have three. Now, you, what you'd have to do is you'd have to get parents who'd be willing, uh, ready, willing, and able to yeah. say, "I'd like my kid to go to New Boston Central School mm -hmm. for the next yeah, the so many yeah. years." I, I, I can tell you, New Boston likely school. would. Mm -hmm. They're full. Their class sizes are actually larger than Goffstown's class sizes, and they're looking at an addition as well. Okay. Um, Dunbarton. You want to try? Potentially could be an option. I. That would be an intriguing. I, I would think from, from the board's perspective, though, when you do that, you lose control on the quality of education for those kids. Um, and you certainly, it would be problematic to do it on the seventh grade enough because we oh, have please. students coming in from New Boston and Dunbar. Um, and I, I would have to agree with Stacy that I think the busing costs would probably negate any potential savings, as well as the tuition costs <coughs> would probably be higher. Than the cost of bringing yeah. people. Well, the issue is elementary, though. The issue is elementary, right. and I would I would say, and I can't certainly can't speak for Dunbarton, but since we cover them, and I'm pretty fluid with their class sizes, they may take if they were even to think about it, two or three, two or three kids a, a grade level. So I mean, it, it certainly wouldn't do enough to ease any one building. Um, okay, my my last comments really have to do with getting back to. Uh, what this board uh, voted on back in May, and that <coughs> we, we directed the we directed the selectmen to uh, direct to all all uh, uh, groups the fact that we wanted to see a model, a budget model that was based on a, on a ten percent less model. We were doing that, uh, at least in my opinion, we were doing that because we wanted to look at a number of different options. So we understand you're going on a zero base uh, budget and, and you're starting from there and you have a, a, a certain budget that you want to come forward with. But we also asked all departments to come up with a model that would, would model this at, at a 10% less, okay? And this is directed to you too, Keith. So is, is that what you wanted to do? Perhaps not. Um, but it is something we asked for, and, and last time I asked the chair of our committee, we're entitled to ask for that, mm -hmm. because that's part of the exercise that we go through, uh, this committee goes through. So even though it's probably not your favorite thing to do, it's something we ask for. So, um, Keith, you, you do understand we have the right to do that under the RSAs, right? You understand we have the right to ask for you to come forward with certain numbers uh, that we request based on things that we want to do as we go about the task of putting together budget, right? The RSA does allow you to ask for pieces of information from us, like our cost and et cetera. Um, beyond that, I'd have to check the legal counsel as to does it force us to give a certain number or figure it out for you to your reduction. I'd have to check with legal counsel. Are we, are we going someplace with this one, Bill? Yes, we are. Yes, Can we you are, get Mr. There? Chairman. Uh, we ask for that. Okay. We're entitled to ask for it, and the RSA <coughs> clearly says we have the right to ask for it and for you to provide us the numbers. I don't think it, it's uh, in the spirit of cooperation that you just summarily dismiss our request and come forward with uh, the budget that you wanted to put together without uh, what we asked for. I find that disappointing. I find it uncooperative. And yeah. we're going to go through the same task next year. And I would appreciate that you 
take our request seriously, just we, as we've asked the other departments to do, and whether that's a 10% next year or five or whatever it, whatever it is that that you you provide us what we've asked for. It's part of how we do our job here. Okay. Um, the other uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, nobody here can doubt the huge amount of work you've put in to put together this budget. You you guys are extremely thorough. You you know your numbers. Um, there is no <coughs> doubt. Uh, I, and Stacy, your presentation on Saturday was fabulous. You did a great job. I learned, I actually learned a lot on Saturday. And, uh, and I, I don't think anybody in this room, if you asked them, is for a bad education for the children of this town. I challenge any of you to ask any of these people in this room, and nobody's going to say, we're for bad schools. You know, everybody wants the best for the children in this town, OK? Um, and I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, Mr. Chair, and that's because I, you know, my wife's a certified teacher in the state, so is my sister, and I have a son who's an assistant principal out in the Midwest. So I understand uh, education costs, good education costs money, but I also understand for uh, all the stories we heard tonight from public comment, there are many more stories that you do not hear about. And Stacy, <coughs> your first slide, the first the, the first slide of your presentation was, what did we look at when we put together this budget? We looked at the economy. Those are great words, okay? We looked at the economy. I look at the economy too. And the economy around me, and that is, when you look at the economy, you can't look at the economy in the vacuum. You know, everybody here pay, or most people here pay property taxes. And so do a lot of other people who don't come to these meetings, and there's a lot of people hurting. So when we're trying to come up with a budget that you know fits the economy we're all in right now, we take it very seriously. I know you, you, put, you took uh, very seriously when you put together your budget, but I guess what I'm saying is <coughs> you said in your slide that you, you looked at the economy, and then what we got was a 5.21% change, that tells me you didn't look at the economy hard enough. Because while you are supposed to put the children first, and it, you're supposed to do that, part of your job is also to look at the taxpayer and look at the economy we're all living in. I'm getting paid, personally, less than I was two years ago. And there's many other stories like that out there. So I only say that as background, and thank you for giving me some latitude, Mr. Chair, is we're doing this because this town is like every other town in this, in this state, and we're hurting. So while we understand while you're putting together a bare bones budget, a 5% increase on top of people where there's, you know, we're going into an all-time high for foreclosures in New Hampshire this year, <coughs> doesn't square with what's going on with the economy around us. And that's why we're trying to look at every possible way we can cut this budget and, and try to reflect the economy around us. So I, I appreciate all the work you do. You guys did an incredible job. You know your numbers inside and out. Part of the reason, Keith, for asking for this exercise to go through is because we can't possibly know these numbers as well as you do. It would be impossible for us to know that. And I can tell by the way you deliver. You know your numbers. So that's why we asked you to do it, because you live closer to these numbers than we do. So it's best if we ask you to do it. So that's my comments, Mr. Chair. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Let me, let me get back to the point where I don't want to get into an RSA interpretation war that says we're going to direct you, give us what it is for 10% less. I'm not sure I read it that way. I read it that we are entitled to ask them. That's about as far as I would go, and then I'd let the lawyers duke it out anything further than that. <laughs> um, I believe it's the job of the Budget Committee to, when we get the estimated expenditures and re revenues from the governing bodies, that this Budget Committee do what it does. Um, I think it's appropriate to ask the governing bodies for their expertise and knowledge and saying, hey, if for some reason we couldn't handle it and needed to break the budget down 10% less than the previous year, where would you guys go? What would have to happen? 
it was glossed over a little bit and i've heard a few things about you know comparative of this and that and the other things but i'm not sure if i really got a good handle on we could do this this and that what i did hear tonight is when guy came up with 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 a request and then i said well if we had to go to the default budget if that would happen where would you go i think those are good good questions to ask and i really would like to know if you guys could really peg saying there are consequences to everything we did the same thing with the town they came over and what keeps coming back to me right away is when uh, chief o'brien fire chief came up and sat there and said okay here's the number i got to hit in order to do that with a 92 percent salary and benefit i've got to hit a firefighter and as soon as i lay off that first firefighter i've got to now find another two hundred thousand dollars because we've got into the what's the five letter safer word safer, safer grant, grant that says if we do not maintain <coughs> the same level of firefighters you have to pay back all the money we received in the grant and that's about two hundred thousand dollars so right away not only is it ten percent you now have to find another two hundred on top of that to pay back the the, the grant uh, but but what those are it doesn't <coughs> say that's something the budget committee would do it's something to say here is what could happen and here are the ramifications of that happening what we and needed to know it which is good to know i mean if the budget committee came over and said you know i really feel we ought to do this and then we go ahead and make motions and debate it and then all of a sudden the paper the next day people say do you know what you did well i know what we did but maybe we don't know all the ramifications and i think that's what there are a number of individuals here would like to know what would the ramifications be if some things happened uh, not necessarily that they would happen but what would really happen? I mean, how bad would it be? Um, if, for instance, because I've heard it tonight a couple of different places, if there were pay, pay to play, let's say every extracurricular activity that didn't include math, science, or history. I just picked those three because that would happen. <coughs> you had to actually pay for something. What are the ramifications? Well, besides an uprising, what are the ramifications? Um, th those are scenarios, and I have no idea whether that's a good example or not. Um, maybe reading writing and math would be a better example but um, so if we said we can't teach math anymore besides the children who don't like math who would be cheering um, I like math I would be frowning so I think that's where it's going and if if there's any way you guys can help us in that area it would be appreciated and I think that's where I'm coming from you mentioned that you might be able to do something and talk to them, Keith, at the next school board meeting right, um, about the, the million dollars. Come back and tell you this is where the cut would be. That is that is the board's decision. Right. I agree. I agree. It's not something we can answer in the next day or two. We have to totally agree. Our next board meeting. It should be. I mean, this is a public process. It's not something that should be be done in private and come back with a spreadsheet or something like that. But we we debate these things in public, and and it's there for a reason. Um, we don't know everything, okay? But together, at least, we might be able to come to a mind meld and, and understand ramifications. And a lot of times we look at it and, and we keep saying, well, it doesn't matter because when we say a money dollar here and we come up with that piece, the end result is it goes on the warrant as a single number. And if we didn't get quite the right number that you would want to do, that number can always be overexpended in one item, underexpended in another, and whatever happens still happens. But from my perspective, it's nice to get it right where there's some kind of agreement if there could be an agreement. That's where I'm coming from. You know what? I have to go to Dick because Dick raised his hand a long time ago. I just want to get back on the list. He did. I'll get you on the list. Okay. Dick, you're up. And you know, in Bill or Ivan? Did, uh, I'll come back to you and then around but right now we'll go dick in the past couple of days there's been an article in the paper an article from well, not article but something on the tv about the state of new hampshire getting 47 or 4100 million dollars from stimulus money and i know the finance committee in concord uh, was meeting on it and it was my interpretation in the end that they had come up with 21.5 million that was going to go to the school districts in the state of New Hampshire to rehire teachers that have been laid off and whatever else had happened. And I'm just wondering, as, as educators, 
if you people have heard about that or know anything about it, and is there any chance that we may be getting a little bit of that money in the future? There's, there's two things that have gone on in the news recently. One is the stimulus money or that extra money that to rehire teachers. Um, our first understanding of that was that would all go towards the state fiscal stabilization aid. Today right. it came out that perhaps half of that money might come back to districts. We have the same exact information <coughs> we have. We have nothing, we have gotten nothing and no additional information from the state as to what that looks like, how it will come to us, what proportion we will get. So. Um, if in fact money will come back to us, absolutely, I'll I'll know about it. I we just don't have any information. Um, the other piece today was the day that adequacy came became public, November fifteenth. They're required to give us adequacy dollars. Um, what we're anticipating for the next fiscal year, um, as of today, um, Gothstown is slated to lose about twelve thousand um, dollars in adequacy dollars. Um, now that's a big question because legislation will happen. It's anticipated that there will likely be a constitutional amendment to reformulate the entire adequacy formula, which could affect us. We don't know how. So um, that's the other piece that was in the news today. I just update you on, um, again, when you look at the revenue sheet, that's why the adequacy aid went down, because that's the that's what we're projecting as what we're supposed to get is less money. So, so in the past, <coughs> not too long ago, there was, there was talk about targeted aid as, as educators what what is your interpretation of targeted aid what would happen to cost them uh, to me targeted aid is to go to the poorer communities I I can't tell you what will happen to Gustown <laughs> well we're considered I mean in terms of equalized assessment like I mentioned on Saturday you know we're at like six hundred and twelve thousand dollars of equalized assessment per pupil whereas the state average is like eight hundred and eighty thousand so under all these formulas we are considered a I know that he's a, a, a receiver town, okay? But under all these other formulas that are in there right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stacy, but it, it includes free and reduced lunch. Right. Mm -hmm. it, in, it includes number of special, special ed. education yep. and a host of other factors that go into the formula. Correct. Um, so it really depends upon what the legislature does in terms of tweaking that formula, and I think that's the battle that has been going on for Absolutely. at least 12 years, yeah. where they keep tweaking the formula. If it doesn't work well for Goffstown, our state reps in Goffstown, eh. if it doesn't work well for the state reps in Moulton Borough, eh. you know, and that's how it works, and it's trying to figure out a formula that's that's equitable, because ultimately, you know, I, I would hope that our state reps are looking you know, out for, I'm not putting too much pressure on you guys, would look out for <laughs> Goffstown. No, that's um, okay, go right ahead. Um, <laughs> And that's, but, but Dick, you were a rep, you know that, right, this is going, that, that went on for all, every year you were probably as, as a rep. Yeah. And, and when we voted on it, we'd look at it and we would say, oh, Goffstown's going to get more money. Right. You so vote, we voted for yeah. it. It doesn't get more money? We're going to vote against right. it. And every other rep around the state does, does the same, the same thing. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, we elect them, right? Yeah. Mm. No, but that, that's where it becomes dicey because. I would hope not. You know, it's, it's a challenge. Bill left, so we'll start with He's Ivan. Back. He's back. <laughs> uh, we'll go Ivan, you? Bill, and back over to Guy. Oh, uh, Dick s started with the same question that I was going to ask because I, I, we, I'd forgotten who the, when we had public comments earlier, one of the, I'd forgotten his name, uh, representing a union in the state was implying from the six or eight hundred million dollar shortfall coming up that <coughs> as of July 1st, so right now we don't really know what's going to come down. So there could be some surprises. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They do it to us every year. Yeah. yeah. And Most certainly. So, uh, and, I, and I was, you already mentioned the adequacy grant. I mean, it's been climbing and now there's a slight drop. But we really don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and this exercise, our budget exercise is academic in a sense because we don't know, I mean, the tax, the Gosstown tax, property tax, pays for, I don't know, 40, 45 percent of the uh, budget, school budget. <coughs> I mean, these other revenues account for, you know, 17 million out of 37 million. And if there's an adjustment in any of these numbers, that has a huge impact one way or the other. I'm glad we don't have the state portion or the federal portion. I'm glad that we don't have to pay for that. That's free. I was being rather yeah. facetious. <laughs> okay. you, you were beating yeah. us, <laughs> Ivan. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to segue to the uh, uh, revenue forecast yeah. page that you sent out today. Yeah. Um, I'm looking down at the bottom four lines, and I realize there's a comment down below that says that the uh, final determination of the unreserved fund balance has not been put forward. Um, right. But I'm looking at at this point, at this point, if that is zero, then we have a revenue shortfall there of uh, over 600,000 bucks. Okay, give me a little more. What do you What do you mean? Okay. Um, I if I if I a shortfall means total, you're comparing two numbers. What right, two if numbers I go are to you? The total revenues and credit. <coughs> It goes down from seventeen seven to seventeen one, which is a shortfall of about six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Okay, now I see where you are. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm looking at the district assessment, which increases two point three mil. Then the state assessment staying flat, the total appropriations going <coughs> up about four and a half, four point six percent. Let me let me ask that question. What what what's the district assessment? What's that revenue source? Property taxes. Okay. In other words, you're looking for a 15% increase in the amount that is being pulled from the taxpayers to support the budget you're proposing. But we, I, I, before we start throwing the, the numbers out there, when is the last time, I, I need to be real here, that the Fund 10 budget appropriation was totally expended. I don't remember ever no, it no, happening. Happens, which, but it's possible. So that's kind of like your numbers is accurate the way you're calculating it, but I need to segue to make sure that is the legal <coughs> methodology if 100% of the appropriation in the current year was expended. I don't have anything else to work with. That is correct. Right. But there is a big bold line on there that said, says we, we haven't have put a number that. in there yet, so let's be careful, please. So, so, so if we threw in $600,000, which I think is the... Give me a, give me a, a swag at what that okay. number might be so I can make sense out of this. And, and actually, Bill, we, we, we are planning to do that. The reason why it was not put on there, because the board started talking about it last night, and we were trying to get you something for revenues for tonight that you requested from Saturday, and we were not able to tackle, we were we did not have the information we needed in order to tackle what we felt our um, reserve fund balance might be. So rather than stopping and not giving you the projected revenue stream, we provided that. And that's why we put down subject to uh, board further consideration. Because so we are going to be looking at that. You will get that information. Right, but that, we're just not, at the SAU, we're just not ready to right. get there yet. And I think in, in Bill's defense, that number is so volatile lately. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have seen that number go as high as $2.3 million, right? 3.2. 3.2. I'm, I'm just saying, so your $600,000 shortfall <coughs> that you're talking about right now was a $3.2 million <coughs> surplus which then lowered taxes a couple of years ago. I mean, the number jumps around so wildly that, you know, as a, pr a prior school board member, it is, that's what makes it so darn hard is that you don't know, the revenues are, it's, it's all over the darn, the darn board because if you get, even if you get this extra money from the state, if you don't budget for it, or unless it's earmarked for something, you can't spend it anyway. It has no to be for tax relief. Two-year moratorium on earmarks. I, I, <laughs> but you know, okay, you know what I'm saying. Like ARA funds could be, you know, which you spent it on reading books, et cetera. But if they just say, oh, here's another $400,000, you just can't say, oh, we can spend it, you know? And it's likely to come to us with some kind of stipulation of what we can spend it on. Well, let, 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 let me wrap I mean, up okay. what I was going to say. Go, go through the 
I can't do a rational job on a budget, my own budget or anybody else's budget, unless I know what the revenue side is. Period. And then we will get you that number. Okay. We just haven't gotten that. We, we tried no to get idea. you what we could no, based on what we said we would do on Saturday. No, I read the bottom line too. Yes. But, you know, You're I can't get there. Uh, yeah, I think what you could do is you could start playing, and if, for instance, I threw them, uh, you're at 15.2%, okay, with, with yeah. zero come back. If I threw in 600,000, <coughs> how much? How much? 600,000. I, I put 600,000 for unreserved fund, <coughs> fund balance. That brings it down to 11.2. <coughs> if I put a million dollars variance, it brings it down to 8.5. Um, if I bring it, it's... If I do the same as last year, which is probably not available because the revenues are really up, just mm -hmm. throwing a wild number out there, 270807. That a actually brings number. it down 2.9%. That's a wild that's number. A number. That's a wild number. That's, that's a wild number. Yeah, I mean, where's it going to come? So from zero to 2.7 million swings it between 15% and minus 3%. So, and, and that's why... You know, when I throw in a 600000 is that obtainable? I think it's totally obtainable because that's unexpended, totally unexpended, unencumbered appropriations, okay? And there are so many things that happen during a budget. I don't remember in the last 10 years we've ever not had at least 600000 okay? And so, excuse me? We've never started at a million dollars below the default for either, which was one of our real concerns last okay. night when we discussed this. Okay. We have no experience... <laughs> With, with We've where had default budgets before, but never almost a million below the default. Okay. And that's another good thing so to talk scary. about. So we're scary. We're afraid. So to you're, say you're, we're going to have six hundred thousand and come back. It might even be tough. And say, and say we've yep. only got fifty. Okay. So given that scenario, if I say two hundred thousand, okay, we're at fifteen point one percent, which comes closer to what Bill was saying with zero. And see, that's the volatility. But exactly. I, the reason I keep talking and talking and talking, I don't want somebody to grab this and <coughs> run with it. It's, it's important to understand and for everybody to understand the volatility, how that percentage, percentages <coughs> are only as good as understanding the basis for the calculation. Okay? And that, that's deadly important. Yeah, I was just say, we had the same thing on the town side when we instituted elderly exemptions and the veterans tax credit when we increased those. We did not really know what that was going to open up, and I believe it was like a five to six hundred thousand dollar difference in our that had to get redistributed to everyone else. You know, we had some good educated guesses, but I think in, uh, um, we, we those were some surprises. You know, no doubt. Swing, you're all set, Phil. No, I still have one more thing. Go ahead. What do you not get out of my head for? A moment? <coughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Do you want God to ask a question and come back? Yeah, I'll if come back. If it comes to you in the middle of it, interrupt me. Or you lose no, it again. Or lose it again, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next time I'll throw a pencil at you. <laughs> Go, ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Guy. Uh, I just want, I've got a, just a quick question on something I already asked before and I didn't, I guess I didn't understand the answer. In the budget, it's on page 34, by the way, in <coughs> the book, 000-2321 SAU Services, 312 Management Services. It's a single line yeah. in this budget, 1.1 million. It's a single line in the printed budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not broken down. Is that because we don't... In the MS 37, 27, give me a number, it doesn't matter. One of those seven numbers. That's, that's what it looks like. I have, and I did not get the opportunity. See these yellow pages? This is the printed version of the SAU budget in detail. That is shared approximately, I think we're down to 69% now for Goff Sound, 68, 71. 69. No, 71. Yeah, it's like about 69. Yeah, about 69% for Goff Sound. This represents 69%. 69% oh, of okay. the SAU budget, and the other two towns pay the other 31%. Okay. Um, but it's fair for us to take a peek at it, and I will send. Could I ask now, well, without having to send you an email, could we get the SAU budget electronically, please? I have, I have it on my list. Okay. Is, is there something different about this when you say take a peek at it? It's a million, it's over a million dollars. Why wouldn't we Maybe be looking at it? It, it? There is nothing. 
nothing we can do about it. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find okay, out. Okay, let me go through that diatribe. This, Again. this $1.1 Again. $1. million dollar admin budget yes. we can't do anything about. That is correct. In How the it an admin budget? It's the entire SAU service. It's the, it's the SAU budget. It's the, well, it, Stacy salary. You know when we say zero, zero, zero and all of this stuff, mm -hmm. and we say that's at the SAU, it's really not the SAU, it's the Goffstown School District, district monies. Every Goffstown portion. Goffstown, no, the no. Goffstown District, those are our assets, so okay. to speak. Am I correct in that? Do we share any assets with the other two school districts? Yeah, anything so to speak? at the SAU would be a shared asset. And that's in the SAU budget, the 1.1 1 .1 that right, we pay for not that's in the budgeted. District right. budget. So that's why right. why is it in this budget for our consideration when we cannot adjust this? It's not in there for your consideration. Because in the Oh, let me go through it. I, I'm not sure if I have the have the last year there was a warrant article that was a petition warrant article <coughs> that I took credit for instigating. Uh, there were others who did the legwork on it, but I took credit for instigating it. Um, I don't want anybody else. I'm not throwing anybody else under the bus. Put me under the bus. But I had found um, some. I had come to that realization last year that there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is go to the public hearing, make your comment, and it is the three school boards of the three schools who actually vote on that. When they got together a month and a half or two months ago, they proposed the budget, and I think that's what this yellow budget is. Mm -hmm. And you are, you were instructed by them to come back with either a level fund or you some. Try to level fund. A, yeah. a, okay, something other than that. So, does that mean that Keith and the school board's hands are tied also? No, absolutely not. Keith and the school board, along with the other two school boards, can make total adjustments to that budget. That, that is under them. Yeah. The problem is the taxpayers of Goffstown, New Boston, and Barton have no say directly. Their only say is through their representatives. And let me go one step further. Because of the laws of the SAU, it actually gives Goffstown total control over that SAU budget and any <coughs> other decision if they wish to enforce what they call a weighted vote, okay, which means... 69% of the votes would it, it'd be weighted. So I just said the total there uh, doesn't happen often because they usually vote pretty <coughs> consistently among themselves. But there has been time where a weighted vote was called because it was important but to Goffstown. Dan, keep and in mind it was on done. that one, if you have to have all like nine of your Goffstown school board members voting in on that particular direction. So there are nine on Goffstown, five on <coughs> five on each of the other two. Each of the so it's you know but if you look at it, the it's weighted piece of it. It's yes. If you if you had just say uh, two or three dissenters on the Goffstown school board, it oh, would not fly. It's you'd right. have to have like you have unanimous. to be you have to be together. We're, pretty close to We're fairly close yep. to unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. So, to work. <coughs> so basically, what that is is that's why it's so important for I, I think we can scrutinize it. We can look at it. But we found out last year we cannot make modifications to that line. Whatever comes out of what they call the SAU board, which is the three <coughs> combined units, say this is the budget. And I'm presuming, is that going to happen on, in December? December. Yeah. December. That's our budget. You're, you're actually only going to vote right on it. Because there's a date certain that you have to do it. Because it's, yeah. it's December something. December yeah. 30th, I think, is the date you have to have it put yeah. done by. Are there any other lines in this budget that we've been asked to look for that we cannot do anything about? Just no. million one. Well, we salary can't. contractual obligations. Well, we can adjust the salary total. Yeah. The contractual obligation goes to the positions, which means if the salary is reduced, then the positions would have to reduce in order for you to accommodate that, most likely, or move right. it from Edion. Right. That's the only line that you have a problem with. And not only that, is the legislation... <coughs> no, let, let me just stop there, because I don't want to get into politicking or anything like that. It's, it's just that is the number. It, and, Oh, yeah, go ahead, if I can just add, I, yeah. uh, you know, the SAU has looked at numbers as well, and if you notice, your assessment actually has gone down by about twenty thousand so dollars. Yeah, there, there's I'm two. Not, I didn't follow that. There's well, there's two pieces. One, we went from like seventy percent down to sixty nine percent. That helped right off. Yeah. Um, so the other town is picking up a, a smaller portion of the total, and that's another formula. Larger portion. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I just, uh, I, you're right. It, it's no, it a big, we, we have, have a small The SAU has looked at, <coughs> again, taking into concerns, and we've reduced some positions um, and cut expenditures, and uh, I'm so sure we you were have. able I'm to cut saying, our budget back. From the Budget Committee's point of view, there's a million one dollars sitting here that we don't know anything about, we have no detail on it, we cannot change, but it has to be part of the budget we're going to bring yeah, forward. And, and right. you yeah. have the budget yeah. that okay. you do have the budget there, you can go to any SAU meeting, any SAU board meetings, they are posted. They're public meetings. You have the right to go. We have public comment. There is an there is an opportunity to go and get, get information. I think there I, I just wanted to stress that you actually, Dan does have a copy of the SAU budget, and we'll provide an electronic copy so right. everybody can have it electronically. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not, in, I mean, that's information or the right to know laws you can add. Sure. But that would serve to do nothing but satisfy our curiosity because we can't do anything about it. You can come to a budget hearing. Come to the mm -hmm. budget meetings. Individual. You can, all those meetings are public. Yeah. You can, there's public comment just right. like. They're held just like a board meeting. To give you an idea, the, the four people who came up to address us tonight, that would be our role mm -hmm. at those meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the effect we would have, is, is that there's no direct voting and there's no direct participation in the meetings. We would have, we have the legal right to observe, not participate. Right. Uh, I got John first, and then Bill, <coughs> then Keith, uh, Keith. Scott. Keith <laughs> just dumps in whenever he wants to. <laughs> so you see the, the oh, question. Oh, yeah, the camera is on you right now. <laughs> the question came up uh, regarding, um, I'm, I'm going to call them part-time workers who uh, don't receive benefits at a particular hourly, at a, at a particular amount of hours. And... What is the time, how many hours does someone have to work in a week to be eligible for health benefits? 25. 25. Over 25, they become eligible? At 25. At, at 25. Um, it's prorated. It's a prorated number. <laughs> yeah. A follow up on that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, it was brought to my attention, and this is why I'm bringing it up to you, that some, that some folks have been offered to increase their hours by a very few, they're part-time and maybe they're 20 hours and... I can tell you we have increased nobody's hours to well, this be is what benefit eligible. Okay, well the people that are getting it are the ones that have mentioned it to me, that's why I'm asking it. Yeah. If you want to send me the information, yeah. I'd be more than happy to investigate it, but I can tell and you they were in, increased nobody's hours. Encouraged to, they were encouraged to take <laughs> a few more hours in order to receive a, uh, the health benefits. Yeah, I'm not aware of any situation since I, if it's a paraeducator, I sign their contracts, and if it's a teacher, I, they would go to the board. So that hasn't happened so, at all? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, if you have a particular, certainly send me the specific information, but I'm not aware of any situation that we increase people's benef hours to get make them benefit eligible. Okay, yeah, thanks. Do you, and if the person, you know who the person is that encourages this to occur, I'd, I'd like to know that as mm -hmm. well, too. <laughs> no, certainly not under the director of the school board. Okay, just a... Yeah, one more yeah, okay. In a perfect world, what would be your ideal if thirty-seven, if thirty-seven point eight million, four, four million, uh, is just making it and just okay for you? In a perfect world, what would be a, an adequate budget that you'd like to see pass this year? I, I couldn't answer that question. I guess yeah. that the school board, board would, as a whole have would have to make a comment on, and we haven't discussed that number, so I, I don't have that number to share. I could tell you it's well over 45 or 50 million. I mean, what could you possibly? You could do a great. Where's the swimming pool? Imagine what you could do with that amount. And uh, but I, I understand it's. Is that where you were going? Were you looking for a higher number? I was asking. Would a high? I mean, is, would a high? Is a higher number something that would be, ex, you know, extremely adequate? So, so would it would it be okay to say? Do you have some specific plans that you didn't budget for, in the budget you presented to us? The answer would be there may be some that the principals and Stacy may have discussed, but nothing from the school board that we presented to you. Okay. Right. And what I, if you look through the budget, you can see items that were cut mm -hmm. that were not put back in the budget. Uh, I, I do, and the reason I asked that no, was because you know yeah. we're all talking about ten percent reduction. Everybody's, everybody, you know, everybody's like, oh, ten percent, ten percent. Well, what would let's it say it was. Like? What would it, yeah? What would it, what would it look like if it was ten percent less? But on the other hand, what would it look like if it was ten percent more? What if you had? What if you could get ten percent more than you were asking for? Would that be? Would everybody then be adequately educated and compensated? And right. would the student-teacher ratio be 
be, you know, better than it is now? Would, would the classroom sizes be smaller? What is it going to take to get to the point that we're, we're number one? I mean, is in that spending or in? Well, it's, it, it, <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was truly appropriate for you to make that comment. I'm only, I'm only yeah. asking. I'm asking that. It's a serious. I mean, it's a serious question. I, uh, <coughs> John, you know, I've been involved be with the school district one way or another for 25 years, and we've never had a budget where the principals came in and said, "I need this," and they got everything they needed. So we wouldn't know how to react to that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I'll, I'll take $40 million if you're willing to give it to me. So you're implying Believe the, me, the, principal's, I'll find the principal's budget would be the ideal budget. Is that uh, what you're saying? No, I, I no because they that. were told this year to ask for bare bones. Yeah. The principal's budget started at a bare bones budget. Yeah. When but you guys said you'd bones. like to see 10%, we told our principals, give us what you absolutely need. And we reduced that number, Stacy did, and then we took a shot at it. Okay, Bill. Okay, this was what got blown out of my mind. Um, okay, we'll come back to <coughs> John. I think. Go ahead. Okay, we're on. A, we we talk about a zero base budget, building up to what we need to fund this, that, and the other thing. And I'm saying that the zero-based budget should deliver, in my mind, a zero unreserved fund balance at the end. But okay. No, I'm talking, sir. No, no, I was just going to admit something. Okay, so, uh, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let me take it from the chair. Address the chair, Bill. How's that? All right. I'm sorry, I have a load of learning disabilities, and okay. when anything else is going on around me, it just blows me out of the water. But that's me, okay? I look at the last three years, and the number that made up the unreserved fund balance has averaged 8.5% of the total budget. 6.7, 10.7, 8.1. To me, those numbers are totally unacceptable. In the world that I lived in, if you missed a budget, an estimate by 2%, 3%, on a few million bucks, and I've worked a lot out of them, you were mud. Over or under. Particularly if you were under. If you estimated and there was a whole bunch left over, that didn't look good at all. I'm just saying that I, I just can't fathom this 8.5% over budgeting. Just a statement. Okay, I, I need to come with some, some facts of how you got to your 8%. I took the numbers straight off the bottom of that chart using Okay. The, the appropriation then, okay, the number networks. and the unreserved fund balance. <clears throat> then what I need to do is look at that information, and because that number, unreserved fund balance, isn't a return completely, entirely a return of appropriation, but includes excess revenues, unanticipated revenues, we got to take that number and we got to split it out how much was of the appropriation wasn't expended and that's the budgeted expense side okay and I, then revenue be, they, they really have to be bifurcated in I, order I, to I get I have to look at it and say if i was estimating something and okay. estimating and budgeting in my world is exactly the same thing but there are two pieces bill no if if i had a good luck and things went boom 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 you know i didn't I didn't offset that. You know, all, all pieces, I might have been 10% high on this, 10% low on that. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, maybe 1% off on the whole estimate. Were on you responsible for sales? No, but I wasn't. That's I, I was not responsible for that's the, <coughs> you know, I had to. Right. Go in and estimate things. Sure, 
Sure. You know, and Understand. across the world that I lived in, a I don't know how big that outfit was. It was huge. The software it's services and digital, which is about forty percent of the business. Right. In order for me to determine that, um, your percentage for your estimate would have to rely on the salesman who either s did sell or didn't sell your product, and that was part of your estimate that you were responsible for, although you didn't have control over it. That's that, we, we got to separate those two numbers in order to appreciate, and I don't know what that number is going to be, but it would be fun to do that, and we have that capability of doing that. So I, I just needed to put that in there. <coughs> you, you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. That, that's a very, that, that, that's, yes, that, that would be the correct way okay. to do it. One year it was error funds last year, but we can also talk about how we underestimated tuition um, to find out why it came in almost 900 to a million dollars less. And now that's another question that we don't have to talk about tonight, but there, there are reasons for everything. It would be interesting to find out. Scott, and did you get to finish what you were doing? Okay. Yeah, I would say that uh, historically, it, from what I have seen, it's been like around 96, 97, 98 percent of expended of the budget. So if there are like these these things that you met, just mentioned, and I've looked back at this, I, I used to be on the school board. I, I, I would look. 91.5. What I'm trying to say is no. for. Uh, hold, hold, hold Hang on, for let's. A second. I'm going to go for Scott and for just go ahead and address the chair, and I'm going to go into. Sure. At, if you're, if the budget was one was one hundred dollars, um, what I'm trying to tell you is, for the time that I served on the school budget, it, I uh, on the school board, it was about ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight dollars of that hundred was spent. Okay, but into what Bill's point is is that when you add on a million dollars from the feds for uh, um, increased adequacy from the, the, the state after you've already developed your budget. That's what skews that off. You can't predict it. It's almost as if you've got a household budget and uh, for two out of the last three years, a great aunt has died and left you 25 grand. Okay? Can you budget for that? Not really. It's just, it's, it, you know, so, um, so that's kind of, you know, where I'm going. I always want to just go back to, um, I think there's been great discussions here, here tonight. When you look at, we talked about before, the equalized value per, per pupil, it kind of goes back to what John Heichel was saying. We are what we consider a more of a poorer town because we are less than the state. That puts so much more pressure on us. <coughs> That's why our taxes, if you look at it, are probably more than the state average, which is what you know some people have alluded to. It's, that's a fact. But that's because we have less of that um, commercial and, re and uh, uh, industrial to support it as a lot of other business, like a place like a Bedford. So that puts so much more pressure on us. That's why we probably don't have AstroTurf fields and l lighted stadiums and beautiful auditoriums like other, other schools do or beautiful you know, uh, uh, water parks and, and things of that nature. So there is pressure and I think